Hey, everybody, it's Bill Burr. And guess what? It's that time of year when you can say it's the Patrice O'Neill Benefit announcement. The 11th annual Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit uh, is going to be Tuesday, March 26th at the New York City Center, 131 West 55th Street between 6th and 7th Avenue in New York City. Doors open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 7.30 p.m. Hey, Bill, what's the lineup this year? We have SNL head writer Michael Che. We got Tim Dillon. We got Marcelo Hernandez, Bonnie McFarlane, Sean Patton, Robert Powell III, Cypher Sounds, Rich Voss, and yours truly, truly, Plus, we have a very special guest. We have a very, sp- no, it says we might have a special guest. No, we have a special guest. We have somebody to come out there, kick you right in the dick. This is a serious thing. Uh, for Maureen Tarrant, who puts this thing together every single year for 11 years, she absolutely crushes it, crushes it on the social media. We, we sell out every year because of her. Um, she's the best. So I just want to take time, you know, it's a new year to say thank you to Maureen Tarrant. Um, tickets go on sale today at 12 p.m. Eastern time. All tickets are 75 big ones, 75 bucks. And um, I think that's it. Tickets can be purchased online at New York NYCityCenter.org slash Patrice 2024 or by calling the box office at 212-581-1212. That number again is 212-581-1212. This is one of my favorite things. Um you know, Patrice was just the best, and we get to keep his name alive. We get to help out his mom, and uh, it's also like a nice stand-up reunion because I don't get to see a lot of these guys, uh, these men and women. Okay, that's it. I'll see you on uh, in March. What did I say, the 24th? Where the hell's the goddamn copy here? The 26th, sorry. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in, checking in on you. Uh, (laughs) How's it going? How are you? Oh, boy, here we go. It's another one. It's another, another year. Yep. January 11th. It's real, people. It's happening again. You're starting a new semester. You've gone back to work. You're back to eating donuts. Do you know what I cannot fucking get off my mind is, you know, right during the holidays. Oh, Billy, no, no. That's what I was. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. All right? Oh, Billy, beach bod in the fucking wintertime. That's when I do it. I don't do it during the summertime when you look good. I do it during the wintertime when you're wearing a big puffy coat. Nobody even knows. Nobody even knows you're in shape. And then when it counts, when it fucking matters, that's when I start eating barbecue. And I come become Billy Fat Tits by May. And just people just, you know, they just have this idea of me that's it's just not true. Okay? I am Billy Fat Tits in the summer. <laughs> in the winter, I'm in shape. Um, that was kind of how my academic career went. Like, I fucking did great in all the grades that college doesn't pay attention to. I did great. Fucking first through fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh, uh, you know, started taking on water, eighth maintained, and then ninth grade, right through fucking high school. I just I just shit the bed. And, uh, and then here I sit, talking to myself on a podcast. Um, anyway... You know what drives me up the fucking wall? And I don't, like, this is not like something I haven't heard in a long time, is when another adult that I don't work with, not work with, that I don't work for, tells me to hang tight. I don't know what it is about that expression. Probably because my dad used to say, hey, hang tight. Hey, hang tight. Hey, fuck you. It's just, I just think that to this day, hang tight. Okay, Sarge, what did I join the fucking, I joined your army? Could you hang on a second? Could you just do me a favor? Could you just hang on a second? I like that. Hang tight. Like I'm sitting there waiting for my fucking orders. Ugh. I don't know why. 
it really has nothing to do with the people that say it because I love the people that are telling me to hang tight. But if they knew, like, you know, I'm like a fucking rescue dog. Like, there's, you know, <laughs> you get a rescue dog. You have no idea, right? You put your foot up on a fucking couch and all of a sudden it just loses its shit. Everybody's got that. Everybody, I, I, I'm, I, this is what I'm doing because I'm out of my fucking mind. I'm going to say everybody does it too so I feel more normal. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe you guys don't. Is it what what thing does somebody say to you that just fucking sets you off? Hang tight is is you know, I don't know, but it, it's for me that's it's kind of like a hit song, like pop music, you know, every couple of weeks there's a new number one. So right now, top of the charts for me is uh hang tight. Honorable mentions uh, uh go into your settings. Could you, okay, could you just go into your settings? Could you go into your settings? All right, hang tight. I'm going to go into your settings. Um, not a fan. Not a fan at all. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know what to start with. I mean, I got to start with the biggest fucking story in my world right now. Nick Saban is retiring. The great Nick Saban. Seven, count them, seven NCAA titles, without a doubt. One of the greatest to ever do it. You could argue the greatest. I mean, he's in the conversation. Does he have more than Bear Bryant combined? I don't know. I didn't look any of this shit up, but uh, I had so much fun rooting against him. <laughs> always respected him but jesus christ did i have fun rooting against alabama it was so much fucking fun and uh i feel like when i watched when i rooted against nick saban you know watching lsu and everything uh i you know i knew what football fans felt like rooting against bill belichick it's just like you just felt like your team had to play a perfect game Mistake-free football, one fucking mistake, and it was it was just over, over. The next thing you know, you're getting choked out, you fucking tap out, and you lost the game, and you're like, "What just happened?" Um, unreal. And I feel uh, privileged as a sports fan that I attended his last game. We shall see. I don't know. I saw some places saying rumors say that he's retiring. And then everybody else told me that he's retiring. Got all these text messages. So it must have become official at some point during the day. I'm uh, in the process of uh, writing another script here with a buddy of mine, Ben Tischler, who did I did Old Dads with. So we're writing another one, having a good time doing that. So I was kind of in the bubble today. And all of a sudden, my phone just blew up. Unbelievable. And Sneaky Pete Carroll. I don't know if it was amicable. I imagine it was. I don't think that he was on the hot seat or anything. He has decided to uh, take his talents to South Beach or whatever he's doing. Maybe he's retiring. I have no idea. But the guy's like 72, 73 years old. And like he's like the fucking Mick Jagger of head coaches. I mean, he is like in ridiculous, ridiculous shape. So I feel like he's going to land somewhere else and. And anybody's going to be lucky to have that guy. Because that, guy, that guy's a winner. Definitely a winner. Um, wow. So who, get, who gets the job? Who gets the job at Alabama? Um, and also, you know, there's the complete lack of warning that that was even coming. Must be a shocker. Um, in Tuscaloosa. I know, I know the feeling. I don't know when all of a sudden Tom Brady, Tom Brady signs... With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I will never forget that day. I was like, wow, it is over. It is officially over. Um, which you knew was going to happen. You just didn't know it was going to be that abrupt. Uh, which is why if you're fortunate enough to have somebody like that coaching or playing for you or whatever. Uh, to en try to enjoy every second of the ride. Because one day, one day it's, it's fucking over. Um... Anyway, last night, uh, or yesterday, I just had like a, a fucking, an amazing day. Had an amazing day. Hung out with my family, 
took the kids to school, you know, did a little helicopter ride, um, realized how much I love Los Angeles and how it's one of the most misunderstood cities. There's so much cool shit to do out here. So much incredible food, so many amazing people. But, uh, you know, Hollywood, you know, these fucking people in the award shows ruined it over the years trying to ram their fucking politics down people's throats. And now everybody hates it, you know. Um, I'm telling you, don't don't listen to that shit. It's fucking it's an incredible city. Um, and then uh, I went to the uh, what are they calling it now? The Avalon it used to be called the. Uh, not, was it called the Paramount? I think it was called the Paramount. Basically, the place where I did my first stand-up gig ever. Um, Louis Anderson, rest his soul. Louis Anderson's comedy showcase. And I went out and I did my little five, six, seven-minute set. They shot it during the day. It was from in front of a touristy crowd. And people were not having good sets. And uh, I went out there. I remember I had bought some new shoes that I thought were nice. Um, I was not going to... Doc Martens were really in, and I really loved Doc Martens, but I knew I just wasn't a Doc Martin guy. Doc Martens were the, the, were, the, were the choice of shoe for the future alternative comics, the writers, the smart, you know, men and women that did stand-up, you know, that, uh, you know, wrote the perfect jokes. And uh, I was, you know, I was a screamer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was an energy guy, so I was like, ah, I don't fit in that quad. So as much as I liked them, I bought, I forget what the fuck they were, something, Hugo or something. Not Hugo Boss, I forget what they were. They're probably defunct, I don't know. I remember I bought those and it was a big deal making that decision because I didn't have any fucking money and they were like 90 bucks and I bought them. That was my big thing and I went out and I did the show and like I said, people were having tough sets and uh, I went up there and I fortunately was doing material about my family. So it really, it, the first joke landed. I remember that it landed with the uh, touristy crowd. And, you know, I was working totally clean and I was talking about my family and I looked like I was 12 years old. So they liked me and I had a good set. And I remember the great Louis Anderson. I couldn't believe I was going to meet him. He came walking out. Because he had one of my favorite stand-up specials of the 80s. The one where he wore the red coat, sport coat. And, uh, and he was talking about his fish. Hey, Louie, get me a jelly donut, Louie. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and I also loved his, his pacing and his storytelling. He was just, he would, that guy was a fucking master. So I did my set. It went well. And he came walking out. And I still remember. He's going, keep it going for Billy Bear. Right? And uh, and then he leans in and he looked at me with a dead serious look on his face. And he goes, you're going to be a big star. And I was just like, wow, it's going to happen, man. I knew it. I knew four or five years I was going to make it, you know, fucking smash cut. Ten years later, I'm in a comedy condo looking at the oven going, you know, just turn it on. Stick your head in there. <laughs> Or you got to do the third show tonight at whatever the fuck I was at. Um, anyway, and that's also the place where Andrew Dice Clay did his first hour-long special. I think it was called The Dice Man Cometh. And then they also had all of these. There was some um, TV show that they filmed there way back in the day. I used to know the history, but there was all these black and white photos in there. People like, you know, Dean Martin and Ethel Merman and all these people. Louis Armstrong. All of those people from like the golden age, Dean Martin and all of that stuff. So last night I went down there and uh, Dean Del Rey once again put together this killer show for his Bon Scott tribute show, which the last time we did it, it was literally the day before they shut down everything for the pandemic. And uh, we were finally going to he was finally going to bring it back next year. And unfortunately, his rock and roll mom passed away. He said some really nice things about her and all the rock and roll moms. Like his mom, this is how cool Dean's mom was. 
she took him to see ACDC on like the Highway to Hell tour or the Power Age tour. I forget what. Um, she also took him to go see, uh, he saw him. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, he saw him in outside of San Francisco in Oakland, I think. And saw like Judas Priest and Randy Rhodes and all these people. It was amazing. Um, so anyways, the show starts. It's such a great show. You got, if you're in L, anywhere near L.A., you got to come. It's kind of the perfect blend of uh, stand-up and, uh, you know, ACDC. I mean, what, what's, what's wrong with that combination? Nothing in my world. So I um, did stand-up. First guy up was Jim Florentine, who flew in to check, you know, just to watch the show, which is awesome. And Dean was like, you want to go up? He was like, yeah. And he was fucking hilarious, as always. But, like, literally the funniest I've seen, Jim. And he's always killed me. And, uh, you know, I was up there listening. My wife was laughing her ass off, which, you know, she grew up around comedians. So she's like a comedian. So if she's laughing, like someone's killing. So he killed. And then Dean went up and killed. Then I went up and I tried some of my new stuff. And that works. I was already on a high. It was funny. I kind of felt like that was the pressure part of the show was over. Because, you know, no one expects me to be good on drums, but like I, I'm a comedian, so I have to be good. And, you know, you're not really thinking about it, like during rehearsals and stuff when you're playing with the band and everything. Then all of a sudden at night, all the all these fucking people show up and you're like, oh, my God, here we go. Right. And. Um, so anyway, I'm fucking. Uh, I do my set and we go to. Uh, we go to, um, oh, God damn it. Who's texting me? Um, all right, let the text go. Uh, so anyway, then it's a 15 minute break, you know, and then we're going to, uh, Dean's like, we're going to do the show. Right. And he had all these fucking sick ass pictures of Bon Scott and like banners. And then he had like Malcolm Young up there too. I mean, it was just fucking insane. And like, that was my band when I was growing up. It's still my band. I absolutely fucking love him. Phil Rudd's like one of my favorite drummers of all time. And it's just, it was just another one of those things. If you told the fucking 15 year old me that I'd be doing this show, I would be losing my mind. So anyway, the show was, uh, I hope I remember everybody. Dean was singing on rhythm and guitar was Billy Rowe, uh, from Buck Cherry, uh, Scott Ian from Anthrax, Josh Z was doing the anger stuff, absolutely murdered. And then Steve Gorman was, was the drummer from the Bagmen and Black Crows. Dave Lombardo, um, Suicidal Tendencies, and of course Slayer. Josh Freese from Everybody and the Foo Fighters. So it's like, you know, three of my favorite drummers. Um, Scott Ian's wife, uh, Pearl, sang on a couple uh, she sang Dirty Deeds and, uh, and back up on like Night Prowler and everything. And then my dumbass. Oh, and Larry Lalonde from uh, Primus came on for, I think, Whole Lot of Rosie. So uh, I couldn't see the set list, right? So Steve Gorman goes up there and the guy is just like fucking, is solid, is just killing, fucking killing. And he's a mountain of a man. Just a fucking big dude, 6'4", and he's just smashing up there and just driving the band. I love watching that guy play. Just drives the band, and everybody's fucking locked in. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, I got to fucking go up, and I got to play two songs. So I played um, What's Next to the Moon and Walk All Over You. And I was hoping we were going to do Walk All Over You first because I could kind of warm up because it's sort of medium tempo. And then... But Walk All Over You was like fucking, you know, it's a fast song for me anyway. So, of course, uh, you know, I'm doing what Elitch tells me to do. He's like, you don't got to fucking sit there warming up on a pad. You know how to play. Like, do some jumping jacks, skip rope. So I felt stupid doing jumping jacks. I just kept walking up and down the stairs. You know, my heart rate's going or whatever. You want to be a little like, you want to come out there and feel like you already played three songs. So I was doing that shit. People looking at me, asking what the fuck I'm doing. And people kept talking to me. And I kept going like, I, I got I to gotta do this so I don't go out there and fuck this up. And then I had friends that were there. We're going to watch me play. And I, then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. This is the pressure part of the show. I know how to be a comedian. <laughs> so we went up there. I go up there. And then, of course, um, we do walk all over you first. 
And uh, and then we did What's Next to the Moon. And um, I can't. I got to tell you, man. I, I I know I messed up here or there, but it kind of was the best I've ever played. And I've always hit like not as hard as I th- I, I thought. I, I always feel like I'm killing it. And then I watch myself, and I look like I'm playing, like I'm asking questions, like Am I doing it right? Is it okay? And that one last night. You know, usually when I watch video of myself playing drums, like I just cringe, like, oh, God, shut it off, shut it off. No, no, <laughs> you know. But the only way you learn, like, when I first started being a comedian, I thought I was like up there looking like a pro and taking all these pauses, and I would just be fucking like looking like a pinball going back and forth, flop sweat, all of this stuff. I was like, oh, my God, I look like an asshole. And, um, I actually watched the video and it looked all right. And I got, you know, I got some nice compliments and everything. So the first one went off without a hitch. And then, uh, you know, I'm counting off uh, what's next to the moon. And it's just got that weird, you know, one, two, three, four, one. And you're fucking hitting all the ends on the crash symbol. Oh, it's just really just fucking weird stuff but um and then it also sort of rides out on the album so you know we decided at the end of the song i think joss z came up that we would just come back to that in the end and uh that one fucking went off without a hitch and i was kind of like i think that went pretty good and uh as i was getting off stage josh freese like hugged me and everything and you know dave lombard all these fucking heroes of mine would you know they said that was really that was fucking solid which that like was like the the greatest compliment i could have ever got and uh i got off stage and then and then after that then i got to right after i finished like i couldn't even like really take it in how psyched i was that it went so well, and then, like, because I wanted to watch Josh, and Josh went out and played, what did he play? He played Dirty Deeds. He fucking, of course, crushed it. And then Dave Lombardo went up, and he played, I want to say, whole lot, the Jack and Whole Lot of Rosie, which was amazing because it was, like, something so slow and then something so up-tempo, and, of course, he effortlessly handled both. And uh, and then Steve Gorman, took like, who played the first five songs and took, like, a six-song break, went up, and uh, played on the last one, Night Prowler. And, uh, oh, dude, it was great. We went out there and, uh, you know, Gibson was nice enough to uh, donate a, uh, an SG, I think, through the, the Bon Scott family or whatever. Like, it's kind of like they, they pay attention to it. Like, Dean, like, knows them and everything. And, um, you know, we gave away some stuff to people in the crowd. And the fucking crowd was amazing. And I was kind of nervous when, I, of course, I was nervous. I went up there. I was thinking, like, you know, walk all over you and what's next to the moon. Like, I was like, these are really like ACDC nerd, deep cut, like fucking songs. And I couldn't believe the energy of the crowd on walk all over you. It's just like we just kind of went into it and it just felt like it was flying. And before I knew it, it was over. And then we did the second one. and It was just a complete blur. And uh, I don't know, man. It was just one of the, <laughs> it was fucking, I still can't believe it happened. And uh, I practiced my ass off for it. And like to the point, like at three o'clock in the morning last night, I woke up and uh, and the song Walk All Over You was like running through my head and my feet started moving like I was practicing it. I was like, wait, dude, it's over. You already did it. You can relax. So um, anyway, thank you to everybody who came out. Thank you to Dean for putting it together. And uh, I just, I don't know. I can't even tell you what a fucking thrill that was to play with musicians of um, of that caliber. Uh, wait, did, did I, let me make sure, did I say everybody? Um, oh, Mike Inez on bass. Jesus Christ, I knew I forgot somebody from uh, Alice in Chains. And he was just like the nicest fucking guy ever. And uh, it was just, uh, it was fucking amazing. I know, and it's probably boring you guys, but like, you know, when you actually get to do your hobby on a semi-pro level like that, it was pretty fucking, it's pretty great. So, and then on top of that, like this new shit that I was doing, I was riffing, I was fucking with the crowd. I had such a good time with the, 
Like I was looking, like before I went out on stage, uh, Dean was like, we got Dave Lombardo here. And he goes, uh, any Slayer fans out there? And I just see this guy like, ah, you know, does this thing. And I look at the guy. It just really made me feel how old we all now. I'm looking at the guy. He, like a Slayer fan to me, is just long, brown or black hair, like mid-back. And just it's just hanging there like animal from fucking the Muppets, right? And this guy had like a fucking, you know, like white in his beard. He looked like, you know, hey, get off of my lawn. You know, like he was at that age. And I'm like looking at the guy going like, that guy was at Slayer concerts in the 80s. So I went out there and I was looking at the crowd and it was like this fucking awesome motley, <laughs> like my generation, all of us, you know, fucking doing the best we can to keep the weight off. And you just see all the years of partying and all of that shit. And I said, like, this looks like a support group for people who survived the 80s. And I kind of just started riffing on that. And, uh... And it was just, I just totally connected with them because they were literally me. And then there was like younger people there who just love older music, which is what I was like. So I just kind of went out there because I was looking at the crowd going like, wow, man, this, this looks like a Florentine crowd. This doesn't look like what my crowd looks like. But I went out there and I realized the reason why I love Florentine and that metal show and I love him on like Ozzy's Boneyard is because... Is much he steers harder into that than I do, but I like uh, like him, Jim Brewer, Doug Jameson. Like when I listen to those guys talking about growing up, it's like the, how, the level of similarity and overlap. So I didn't realize like it, like like that crowd is my crowd, um, or not my crowd or whatever. I just totally vibed with them, and I had such a fucking great time. And um, they laughed at everything I did except I did this. I talked about uh lady die dying and they all groaned on it which i got such a kick out of i was going like oh yeah the guys are stripped stuff is fine i knew it i knew what i was like being sarcastic saying i knew that when you know that it was dangerous in front of a slayer crowd to bring up <laughs> princess diana dying um and uh, I don't know, just because how great their energy was, I tried out all this new shit. I'm just, I'm beyond, I'm chomping at the bit to get back out on the road, which is a fucking amazing feeling at 55 because um, there are days when I, I, I wasn't feeling that. So this break has been the perfect thing for me. And uh, I'm going to fucking murder when I get out there. And that same energy I got from the crowd when um, I was doing my jokes, I felt it during that first song. And, uh, you know, I got to live that dream that didn't come true. You know, I started off playing drums and jamming with people, and I, th I thought that that's what I was going to do. And, uh, but I knew that I didn't have, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe I just knew that by the time I figured it out, I would be 55 fucking years old, and, like, that window would have closed. So just to be able to pretend doing it for two songs with fucking people I grew up watching was, was, uh, was, was awesome. So with that... And with that, we are now, college football season is over. Congratulations to the Michigan Wolverines um, and all their diehard fans. I am a fan, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I, I was sitting there watching every game during the Appalachian State um, years. I, I talked about that on the Rich Eisen show because um, he's, he's like diehard. And, um, you know, I've been watching Michigan for a long time, but during those those years where it just wasn't happening, I'm not going to lie to you, I, I couldn't fucking watch. So uh, for all the, the true diehards that were there when they fucking sucked and lost to Ohio State, which felt like 70 years in a row, um, congratulations. Um, amazing game. Um, fun game to watch. It still drives me nuts when they go forward on fourth down. And I got to be honest with you. Like, I was like, why are they going forward on fourth down? Why are they going for the kill shot in the second quarter? They, you got the momentum. Just kick it down, cough and corner. And, you know, instead they go for it. They don't get it. And then they just concede a field goal. And, uh, and I think it's stupid to go for it on fourth down in the second quarter. And then Washington goes for it on fourth down in the second quarter and scores a touchdown. So rather than it being 17 to six, all of a sudden it's 17 to 10. So it shows you what the fuck I know. 
Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably wrong. I just, an old guy going like, they're not doing it the way they did it when I was a kid. You know, I think I'm just doing that shit. So I'm really trying hard to fucking, you know, not bitch about the same fucking shit. So I'm kind of over that. And, uh, but I really like the Washington Huskies and, uh, their quarterback and their wide receiver, that kid Rome, uh, however you say his last name, man, he just looks like, you know, I mean, he was wide open a lot. It's just Michigan was getting so much pressure on that quarterback um, and then came up with two big interceptions. Um, you know, Jesus Christ, fucking unreal. So anyway, that's all I got. I don't have any advertising people, so uh, I don't know what. I'm going to be hanging out with my kids uh, this weekend, you know, going to take them up. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go. We're thinking of going away this weekend. I don't know what. Um, you know, I got my ass in shape finally. I've been doing three days on, one day off at the fucking gym. I'm feeling strong again. My shoulders are all right. But I'm also kind of like, you know, not as strong as I used to be because I'm fucking old. So I just got to watch out for that shit. Um now my fucking knee's talking to me. It never ends. So uh, anyway, with that, uh, oh, and shout out to Joe Coy, fellow stand-up comedian, you know. Uh, Jesus Christ, everybody jumping all over that guy. Like, I, I, I'll tell you right now, I would not want to do that fucking gig only getting 10 days. And, uh, you know, that's... Um, that is a, uh, that's a tough gig. So <laughs> I only worked with that guy, I think one time on the road and I thought he was ridiculously talented and he fucking murdered. And he also closed, I want to know, he went on second to last and I'm not going to say who the person after, uh, really had to work and it was a big comic. So, um, that guy, yeah, I think a lot of people got a bad, pers uh, wrong perception of that guy, man, you know, um, Jesus Christ, that looked like a fucking corporate gig, you know, <laughs> one of those fucking, it's like, we've all, we've all had that, that gig. It's just wasn't on TV. So, uh, yeah, whatever. Fucking shake it off. Move on. Fuck them. Um, that's it. All right. That's the podcast for the, for, uh, this Thursday. Then we have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Have a great weekend, you cunts. And, uh, let's enjoy some NFL playoffs, playoffs. All right. I'll see you. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr and it's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday. January 11th, 2016. What's going on? How are you? How's it going? I'm in a great fucking mood. I don't know why. You know what? I haven't boozed in like fucking, I don't know what it's been. I don't know, nine, ten days or something like that. I did have a sip of wine last night, but I don't really consider that boozing. You know, the way I go after it. Oh, um, <laughs> my wife, so, you know, something, it's funny. When I, when I stop drinking, my wife always tries to get me back to drinking. Not to get drunk or anything. She just is like, you're so fucking, you know, I drive her so fucking nuts that I, I just think sometimes, you know, if she wasn't such a good person, I think she would try and like drug me every night, like around supper, right? Make a little dinner. Be like, how is that, honey? Oh, look at you. You look sleepy. And like, I have no idea. Like she just put some shit in my food. Not to like kill me, just to sort of sedate me. Um. But uh, anyways, but I haven't drank in like 10 days or something. Wow, that really made my head go somewhere. Like, wow, that's kind of fucked up. She does that. Um, but yeah, I haven't drank in like 10 days. I, uh, I'm feeling good. And that's, so what happens is then I slowly, you know, I start to eat better. I'm starting my day off with the old, uh, from the old country thing, you know, little fucking uh, water at room temperature. Which should make you gag if you're any kind of a fucking human being. But uh, you get used to it with some lemon and then a little cayenne pepper in it. And then I take, uh, I let that settle in me. And then I get a couple scoops of uh, Greek yogurt, the all-natural stuff. That actually kind of tastes like sour cream. 
And the first time I, I ate it, I was like, this is the worst shit I've ever tasted because I was used to the, uh, the crack baby yogurt that I've been eating my whole life that has like fucking 40 bags of sugar in it. You know, when you eat yogurt, you're like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the amount of sugar that's in fucking regular yogurt, you, might, you should fucking snort it. I mean, it's literally like, I mean, I'm a gladi. I still fucking love it. But uh, the Greek shit took me a minute and now I'm actually, uh, I like it, man. If I drink this shit and just have a couple scoops of that, it kind of fills me up. And um, that's kind of the big thing is you become an old fuck like me. It's just just somehow getting the hunger to go away without doing damage to yourself, you know, and then walking around and burning a few calories before you go to the next one, you know. And I know this bunch, you know, hopefully some younger listeners listening to this judging me. Go, listen to this old fart talking about fucking lemon water, cayenne pepper and fucking Greek yogurt. Well, you know something? If you're lucky enough, you'll live long enough. If we don't fuck up something or something bad doesn't happen to you, uh, you know, to get to my age. And, you know, it's good to start healthy habits now. Ah, fuck, shut up, Bill. What are you, the fucking first lady? You know what I'm doing right now? I'm doing shit that, like, a first lady does right now. I'm actually, let's get in shape, kids. How about you go outside for 10 minutes a day and you just do some jumping jacks? Can you fucking believe that? They got to tell kids to go out and play. You know, that's how fucking insane video games have got. I mean, if I made video games and I actually saw Michelle Obama on TV begging kids to try to not have their first cardiac incident by the time they're in the third grade. I mean, I, I would tear up and just be like, I did it. You know, I am so fucking great at my job. I've made children stop playing outside. <laughs> you know, do you think there's like a, the Alec Baldwin of the video game in industry, you know, from Glen Gary, Glen Ross coming in, just screaming at him? You know how I many kids I caused to have a heart attack? Seven. Fuck you. Right? It's just screaming at him. <laughs> Trying to get him to... We haven't done our fucking jobs till every kid has a fucking pacemaker by the seventh grade. Um, I don't know. Anyways, yeah, so I'm trying to get back in shape. So uh, I've been stoned sober. So yesterday I got my, uh, my, my first massage in like, I don't know, like two years. Whenever I get a massage afterwards, I always think like, I got to start doing this, man. This is great for an old fart like me, you know, and then you come home, you crush the waters. You get all the toxins out of you or whatever yoga shit they tell you to do. And, um, but I know this always happens. I'm like, I don't fucking do this. You know what? Once, once a month, I'm going to go down there, you know, fucking, you haven't worked out my fucking back, like my whole, I don't know what's like, I have a little curvature of the spine and the lady's like, where are the problem areas? Right. And of course your brain always goes my dick, but you know, it's a legal place. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed to be having a uh, problem in the uh, central pelvic area on the frontal lobe. Um, I'm like, my, I never even noticed it either. I was like, uh, my right shoulder, my right forearm, and my right foot. And I was just like, wow, how fucked up is my right side? And then I realized all of them, all of those injuries I got from playing drums. You know, my right forearm from fucking holding the stick wrong. I don't know what I'm doing with my shoulders. Probably after I fuck up another fill, looking at the bass player and shrugging like, I'm sorry. I mean, I tried to get back on one, right? And then my foot, I fucked that up years ago trying to get my bass drum as fast as John Bonham's, you know, which I never even remotely achieved. I just have the lifetime pain. You know, every time I take a step, I'm always reminded of what a wonderful drummer John Bonham is. Um, so anyways, uh, I did that um, with the lovely Nia. That's always a good thing to do. You know, you go in there with your wife then you don't feel like a dirtbag. Because anytime I go to get a massage, I always feel like a dirtbag. There's just no way not to feel like a fucking complete piece of shit when you walk in there like, yeah, hey, I, want you to, I want you to work out the kinks there, sweetheart. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, wait a minute. What am I talking about? I got a massage in fucking uh, Milwaukee. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, that was a steam. That was a steam. That's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I guess I haven't in like two fucking years. 
And they always do the same thing. When they, when they put the, my hands on my back, they just go, wow, wow. Do you have a lot of stress? Has it been a while? It's like, I hear you. <laughs> Your back feels like gravel. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, we did that, and then we came home, and um, we made uh, Mario Batali's uh, lasagna, bolognese, and uh, it was fucking delicious. Uh, homemade pasta, homemade pasta things and all that. I got to get my homemade pasta game up. I tried to make the spinach pasta, and the, the, the pasta was definitely green, but you could still see the chunks of uh, spinach in there. You know what I mean? So what does that mean? Did I not knead the dough enough? Was Because uh, it was frozen spinach like it said to be, you know, like the, the, the recipe said to be. Am I saying that right? Like the recipe said. Said to be? What the fuck does that mean? Like the recipe said it should be. I think that's what I was trying to say. But, um... You know, and I dried it out, and maybe I just didn't dice it up enough. I have no idea, but um, I'm actually psyched that uh, the consistency, though, I can get that down. I might have needed it, needed to need it a little bit more. I don't know. Is there any uh, higher qualified people out there that could help me out on how to make uh, the right spinach pasta? Because I watched some videos, and I still fucked the thing up. But anyway, so we did all of that. And meanwhile, I was watching, like, the playoff games. Playoffs! And um, fucking great games this weekend. Heartbreakers, but just fucking just great games. With also that, that creeping sadness that I always have when the playoffs are here. That it's just like, did another regular season go by that fucking fast? God damn it. It's, it's going to be over. It's another month. It's going to be fucking over. This time next month, is, is, I'm not even going to say it because it's going to be too fucking depressing. Um, however, I have gotten totally into the Celtics and NBA hoop with my Bruins. So, I mean, I got a little game almost every night sometimes too. But anyways, so uh, let's go through them. Let's go through them as every fucking douche who doesn't like sports is going to roll their eyes. Just fast forward like fucking 40 minutes and you'll be safe. Um the first one I saw, I think I watched, I taped all of them. Um, so I watched them at weird times. I watched uh, the second half of the original Texans, the Kansas City Chiefs, just absolutely dominating the uh, the new Texans. And I actually tweeted that out to, on, uh, on Twitter. Um, and I actually got a ton of shit for it. People are like, oh, what are you trying to show off your sports knowledge? It's like, no, I like sharing it. I love when people do stuff like that. I'm a sports nerd. Okay, I'm not acting like I played at a professional level. I just love that shit. So I'm going to take you through it. For those of you who didn't know that the Chiefs were originally called the Texans, they actually played in Dallas, Texas um, when the AFL first started. And when the AFL first came out, the NFL, the established league, publicly laughed at them and said, these guys are crazy, this will never work, ha, 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 whatever. I, you know, are you nervous? No, we're not nervous at all. We're just going to do, you know, the American people know where the quality football is at, right? That's what they said publicly. And then behind the scenes, as much as they may or may have not believed that, they then hedged their bets. And they wanted to try to um, sabotage the AFL as much as they could before it even got started. So the AFL, how many fucking teams did they have? They had the Boston Patriots, the Buffalo Bills, the New York Titans, uh, the Dallas Texans, the Minnesota Vikings. And I'll get back to that before you say that I'm wrong on that. They had the Minnesota Vikings. I used to know this by heart. Denver Broncos, Oakland Raiders, San Diego Chargers. I'm sorry, the Los Angeles Chargers. And uh, Dolphins weren't in it. Bengals weren't in it. Who the fuck else is left? Bears, Lions. Yeah, something like that. I, I probably forgot a team or two. And um, so the owner with the most money was Lamar Lundy. I believe that was his name. I didn't look this shit up again. I, I, I read this whole book on it. Lamar Lundy. And he was the wealthiest of all owners. So basically this guy could hold out the longest in this new crazy venture. All right? So they well, how they attacked the fucking AFL, they did it on two different levels. The Dallas Texans were owned by Lamar Lundy. 
the most wealthiest of all the owners. So what they the NFL did was they awarded Dallas a team, which became the Dallas Cowboys. So for a season or two, I forget. I didn't look it up, as I said. They, you could either go see the Dallas Cowboys or the Dallas Texans. Now, the Dallas Cowboys, as much as they were an expansion franchise, you could go down and watch them get the shit kicked out of them, you know, by Johnny Unitas, Jim Brown, or, or you know, Frank Gifford, or all well, these guys, you know, all these legends. The fucking Green Bay Packers would come to town. You get to see Vince Lombardi in the, the, the early days of the Packers sweep. You could see all this professional level talent. Or you could go across town and go see the Dallas Texans, a bunch of nobodies, playing a bunch of nobodies because they weren't established yet. So obviously, that completely, um, that's a no brainer as a sports fan. You're going to go see the NFL team and go see all these stars that you've been watching on TV. So uh, that completely fucked them and. They had to move to Kansas City, and they became the Chiefs. They kept their colors, though. But they were originally called the Texans, but they gave up the name. And then the Minnesota Vikings, which I did not know. I didn't know any of this shit until I read the book. The Minnesota Vikings were originally going to be an AFL team. So what the NFL did was not only award Dallas a team, they also went to the owners of the Minnesota Vikings and said, hey, do you want to just join the NFL and not be part of the AFL? Come on, we're an established league. And, of course, they said, hey, fuck you guys and your new venture. We're going to fucking fuck the whole going against the NFL. We're going to join them. So that's what they did. They, uh, they opened a franchise across town from the wealthiest owner, and then they stole one of their teams. That, that was their two moves as they publicly laughed at the AFL. So there you go. There's a little fucking uh, little, little history from all freckles. Um, but having said that, you know, maybe they got him back. But I guess they'd have to beat the fucking Cowboys. And they're also part of the NFL. So uh, congratulations to the Chiefs. And evidently they're playing the Patriots is what I got from some of the tweets. And uh, I am not a comfortable Patriot fan. No Patriot fan who's been watching the Patriots is, you know. We had a lot of losses towards the end of the year. Um, I'm hoping, you know, we're going to get some help back on our offensive line. Um, either way, it's going to be, even if we were healthy, it, it would have been a brutal day because, uh, you know, Andy Reid is no slouch as much as a guy gets a ton of shit. I mean, the guy's been to a bunch of uh, NFC championship games and shit like that. He has been there before. But, you know, you do need the players. You do need the ownership. You need all of that type of shit to try to uh, to try to succeed. So uh, congratulations to them. And um, I am by no means comfortable with next week. Um, and, you know, also, you know, the Chiefs beat the Seattle Seahawks as far as being the loudest fans at one point, and they did it in that old ass stadium rather than the uh, the stadium the Seahawks fans have that helps them out and contains the sound. <laughs> I'm such a cunt, but it's true. Um, and uh, yeah, so speaking of the Vikings and the Bengals, my condolences to fans of both teams. I've been there. Fortunately, have not been there in a long time. I guess the Giants losses, but I can't whine as a fan with all the other shit that was going on. But uh, Jesus fucking Christ. What the fuck was that guy doing after he picked off the ball, walking up to the tunnel, already celebrating? I thought fucking athletes were, were superstitious. The fuck are you doing? Right there. Yeah, right. I, that's fucking unbelievable to me. And then he's fucking sitting there. He probably already took his goddamn cleats off. And then the very next play, what was it, two plays in, they fumbled the fucking ball. I had to watch this part of the game on highlights because I taped the game. And for the one time I don't do the extended fucking record, this shit happens. And um, I probably had to put his cleats on, run back out on the field. And I think he was so fucking frustrated because he still had champagne, you know, coursing through his veins. He was already mentally the next week that he goes, it was the same guy, right? Goes in and fucking knocks out that player. Unfucking believable. Unfucking believable. Hey, Steeler fans, how many of you shut the game off after the interception? Huh? Not because you're a fair weather fan, just because you couldn't stomach to watch the Bengal fans jumping up and down and having some joy. You know? I, I'd forgive you if you did that. I'd forgive you if you walked away, you know? Or if you already started celebrating. And you turned your big fucking sausage eating back to the fucking TV and you're already doing wah, wah, da, day, ba, da, ba, da. who do we got next week doing all that shit? Fucking brutal. And uh, 
The Vikings, I won't even, I don't even. Can you explain to me how your place kicker had the laces facing your kicker twice in one fucking game and a playoff game? That's on fucking, I never, I, you never see the laces in, right? I never even knew about, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't never even knew about laces out since fucking Ace Ventura. That's when I learned about it. Or is it Ace Ventura? Um, Jesus, fuck. I mean, I watched the replay of that game, and I went on Twitter beforehand, and I, you know, I found out the Vikings won, which fucking sucked. But I was in the middle of, you know, trying to make spinach pasta, which was well beyond my cooking ability. So, you know, I was a little fucking, uh, got a little sideways there for a minute. And um, I was thinking, like, what the fuck happened? I mean, he must make this field goal. And then Seattle just has a ridiculous kickoff return, and then they're able to kick it. Or maybe they, they score a touchdown, or maybe a defensive back falls down. I, I had no idea that he was going to fucking lose it. Oh, my God. Fucking brutal. But you know what? Every championship team, you got to have a little bit of luck. The first fucking Super Bowl the Patriots won, we had the tuck rule, which was a fucking rule. Everybody blames Tom Brady. It was a f- blame the officials. Oh, no, the, the rule, rules committee for coming up with that weird one. Because I say to this day, that's a fucking fumble. That's a fumble the way Sugar Bear Hamilton did not interfere with Ken Stadler the year the fucking Raiders won it in Super Bowl Eleven. So anybody in Oakland, put your fucking hankies away because I don't want to hear you crying about it. That was payback for Super Bowl, uh, not Super Bowl Eleven, the fucking playoffs, playoffs in uh, 77. When Sugar Bear Hamilton was already in the air jumping at Ken Stabler. And and then he lets the ball go and they called roughing the passer. And back then it wasn't a 15-yard penalty. Oh, it, 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 They put the ball where the guy threw it. And it was the end of the game and he threw a 50-yard fucking prayer. Ray Hamilton's already in the fucking air, lands on Ken Stabler. They call roughing the passer. And they took the ball from like the 50 and put it on the fucking one-inch line and then the Raiders went and won the fucking game so I don't want to hear anything about it but I am man enough to say that the tuck rule is fucking horseshit and uh, I think it's a fumble you know but I'm not expecting that level of maturity from Raider fans you know a fan base that goes to the game you know dressed with um, you know spikes on your shoulder pads that have been checked by security to make sure that they're totally safe as you make a I'm not safe angry face (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, you know something that does bug me? I can't stand when they fucking, um, when people get upset that Hollywood has the audacity have awards, to have award shows, and they always talk about the self-congratulatory night. Um, like, what business doesn't have an award show? It's just not fucking televised, you know? If you fucking drill for oil, you know they have the best of, you know, BP and all them. They have their fucking... Yearly fucking Christmas party. You know, best regional manager. Goes to uh, Clem Clemfield out of fucking Mishawaka. Clem, I'm paying for that call girl tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. Is his wife here? You know, they do. And they give him a little fucking trophy. They have salesman of the month. Shit, you work at McDonald's. You can get employee of the month. You know, you know, they have franchise of the year. You join the fucking Cub Scouts. You tie your fucking shoes. They give you a little badge to sew on your fucking shirt. Right? Why isn't Hollywood allowed to have their little fucking evening? What is it, huh? What is it that bugs you? That there's a bunch of hot, famous ass there? Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez, I'm sorry. You know what I want to see? I want to see somebody go out there and defend Bill Cosby on an award show, dead serious, and just fucking hold it and never let anybody in on the joke and then try to continue hosting and do it in the monologue. Let's see if they ask you back. (laughs) All right. I'm done being a cunt. Um, Pats versus Kansas City. No, I'm not. This is what I want to fucking read here. I want to read uh, the live reads, advertising. All right. You know, it'd be great as even if you even if you, you know, have a nine to five regular job, if you start off with a decent breakfast, you bring your fucking lunch and then you order Blue Apron at night. And you all know. You, did I say y'all? Y'all, uh, you all know what I'm talking about. Um, dinner is what fucks your diet. 
At least for me, because I can eat well the whole fucking day, the whole day I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And then by fucking four o'clock, I'm like, hey, I want some fucking potato chips, you know, I want some ice cream, you know. If you can just fucking call these cunts and have them deliver a 500 to 700 meal and you just fucking eat the shit, right? And then you're done, drink waters for the rest of the night, have a little celery already cut up, you know, throw a spoonful of peanut butter in there, you know, it's going to melt off. Unless you have, you know... I don't know, some built-in excuse, you know, like a lot of overweight people do. Oh, my metabolism's really slow. Yeah, yeah, that and 8,000 calories a fucking day, dude. Oh, you know what? We only have four this week, so why don't I do two and two? Let's do that. All right, let's get back to the thing here. Um, all right. Uh, oh, today, as I'm rushing through this fucking podcast, um, I'm having somebody coming over looking at my garage today. I even have to whisper this shit. I somehow talk my wife into, uh, you know, allowing me to have, just have somebody come over and take a look at the garage. I know I did that a couple months back, but then I got busy, but now I, I got the person coming back again and, uh, I'm actually using her skills, you know, that she does with me. That's how I ended up with the dog. Like we're not getting this dog. We're just, we're, uh, fostering the dog for a couple of days. Cause she knew that I'd fall in love with the fucking dog. And then that would be it. So it's kind of like when you first start start dating a woman, um, you know, when she wants a relationship, when she comes over to your apartment, what she starts to do is she leaves shit there because it gives her an excuse to come back. I mean, that's fucking nuts, right? Like they're thinking that far ahead. Oh, you're sitting there like, oh, look at those tits. Oh, what the fuck? Are? Right. That's all you're thinking. And they're sitting there plotting. You know what I mean? It's like you're some fucking head coach that has no game plan, and she's across the field like fucking Bill Walsh calling the first 25 plays of the game, right? Oh, I love a football life. There's a nice reference to use. Um, so, you know what's fucking hilarious? And speaking of which, the Patrice O'Neill benefits coming up once again. Uh, I'll tell you a quick Patrice story. Um, he was so fucking brilliant that I remember he was dating this woman, and you know, or whatever, seeing her. And she started leaving shit around his house. And I, I, I just had brought that up. I go, yeah, you know, I dated this woman. You know, she left this shit here and she left that. It's like, what the fuck, you know? I only see her like, you know, once every two weeks. She just has shit there. So for two weeks, I keep looking at her fucking brush or the shampoo she left or whatever. And it just, I keep thinking about her and it's annoying me. And Patrice just goes, he goes, so throw it out. I go, what? He goes, throw it out. I go, I can't throw out a brush. He goes, I would. I go, get the fuck out of it. He goes, yeah. He goes, I did that. And he told me a story where there was a woman <laughs> he was messing around with, and she left these toiletries and a little bag of, like, you know, makeup and brush and all that, and he, he fucking threw it out. And then she, <laughs> she came back, like, a week and a half later. <laughs> And she goes to go in the bathroom. And she's like, uh, she's like, hey, what did you do with my uh, my stuff? He goes, and he just plays dumb. He goes, what stuff? She goes, I left shampoo here, a little makeup bag. He goes, oh, that was yours. Yeah, he goes, yeah, I threw it out. And she was like literally beside herself, but actually on some level respected him for like fucking realizing what she was doing. And then also, I think because that early on, he clearly let her know in a very funny fucking way that he wasn't looking for a relationship and uh, that she was able to relax and kind of be thinking, ah, you, oh, we're just fucking. All right. I wanted a little more. He doesn't at least. But he let her know so fucking early on that it didn't really hurt. You know, does that make sense? I mean, I, maybe I'm speaking for her, but. I guess I am. But whatever. Either way, it was fucking funny. Oh, Jesus. Was that the fucking worst? I literally just jumped out of the plane and pulled a fucking ripcord on that story. Sorry. It's been a while. It's been a while since I told that story. Hasn't it? Or have I told it before? I don't fucking know. So anyway, so I'm kind of using um, my the same fucking tricks that my wife used that got me the dog I'm using with her because um, we're going to like... Hey, why am I whispering here? Like she can't just listen to the fucking podcast. Fucking sometimes like how dumb I am. It just really fucking. So anyways, what I want to do 
is I have this old school fucking, you know, my house is built in 1923. So the garage, whenever it was fucking built, was built um, to house like a fucking Model T Ford kind of car. And those things were, those things you sat inside the fucking wheel wells. You know what I mean? If you, if you look at old cars, um, you know, how the fenders used to flare out and then there was just the engine. And, you know, you sat like literally like right behind basically where you, you sat. I can't, I don't know if, if I'm explaining it correctly. You know what I mean? You're sitting inside the fucking wheel, wheel wells, right? Not like literally in them, but as far as like the line down the side of the car, right? Like if you stuck your head out and you didn't have any fenders on it, you'd be looking at the fucking tire, right? As opposed to, you know, the fucking road. I know all you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it also goes to show you like how fucking fat and, and, and big people have gotten. You know what I mean? Two things. If you ever go to Mount Vernon and you go to Thomas Jefferson's house and you have to duck underneath the fucking, uh, the, uh, the fuck do you call them? The door frames. You see how much taller people are. And then when you look at those old fucking cars, the fact that two adults could sit side by side like that and it wouldn't be, they probably won't even touch in each other, you know? So anyways, what I'm trying to say is that my, uh, my garage is long and skinny and it's like high up, you know? And, uh, and then it kind of flares out at the back as it kind of wraps around the back of the house a little bit. So what I want to do, the, the front part is long enough for me to squeeze my truck in there. Um, but then in the back, what I want to do is I want to turn that into like a little gym, which my wife is all for. And then I'm also pitching that I build maybe a little drum room that I could actually, I got this drum kit that I bought that I have in cases that if I want to play it, I have to throw it in the truck and drive it down to a studio. I'm thinking of making, building like a room within a room, which will add no value to the house unless I someday sell it to another fucking drummer who also whispers on his own fucking podcast like his wife can't hear it. Fuck, I'm still whispering. You know why? You know why? Because... The guy's coming in like a half hour and my wife is asleep downstairs. If she hears me yelling about it, I might have to have this argument sooner than I'm prepared to have it. So um, that is the game plan. And like a couple months back, I bought those atomic holds. Um, you know, all those things like the, that American ninja shit. So down, downstairs in the garage, I want to just have those hanging from the ceiling. So I can do all that grip strength shit that I want to get better at. By the way, I fucking started working out for the first time in forever. And I went to do, go do pull-ups. Holy shit. I literally felt like, I was like, do I have sandbags in my pockets? What the fuck's going on? I did six good ones and whimpered through the last four. I always try to do 10. I can't even fucking do it. It's pathetic. Um, so that's like the big exciting thing in my life right now. And I got to kind of get this thing going um, before my wife wakes up and finds something else to do in the house, you know, maybe, I don't know. So anyways, by the way, people, I'm doing a gig in uh, Vancouver. I'm doing a gig in Vancouver, uh, Canada this Sunday night, a last second one that was added because I left my January open because I'm still waiting to hear about a uh, season two. We uh, meet with Netflix this week to pitch them our ideas for season two. Uh, so if you've already watched F is for Family, I thank you so much because you, you've got me to at least getting the meeting. So we'll see. Uh, we will see what happens um, with that. And um, so I hadn't booked anything um, in January. So now we're having some last second gigs um, coming up. I'm going to do a gig in Vancouver this Sunday, and then I'm going to do a couple dates, one or two dates, I think, right before the Patrice O'Neill benefit um, in the tri-state area. We're still... Um, Trying to fucking iron those things out as we speak. Jesus Christ, Bill, spit it out. All right, let's get to the uh, the questions of this week. Um, all right, inbox, inbox, inbox. Where's the content? Here's the content. No, I had it on the other page. What am I doing? Oh, there we go. All right, Bill, Patriots first Kansas City. Hello there, Mr. Burr. How's it going, you freckled cunt there? How are you? I uh, hope your holidays were just peachy. Same to Cleo and Nia. Uh, today, I just wanted to hear your honest and objective thoughts about the matchup between your Pats and my Chiefs this weekend. I was just listening to your podcast from 12 7 where you said KC won't win shit. 
Somebody tweeted me that I said that. I talk so much trash. I don't even remember saying that. Uh, and I'm content that you may eat those words this week. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I absolutely might eat those words this week. Uh, but having said, I think I meant, well, KC won't win shit. You're not going to win the Super Bowl. That's what I mean. My pick is uh, the Seattle Seahawks, which is not really a uh, is not really a, a genius pick by any stretch of the means. They've been there two fucking years in a row. Um, I mean, didn't they win yesterday without Marshawn Lynch? I was running back and forth trying to make lasagna noodles. Uh, as far as I know, I didn't see Marshawn Lynch in there. My wife was also clicking back and forth to like the fucking Golden Globes. So um, I just know that they. Uh... No, well, no, wait. That was that was the earlier one, dude. Do you know? Yesterday, I watched. I watched fucking Ohio State, Indiana. I watched two playoff football games and I watched half of a Celtic game and fell asleep. It was fucking ridiculous. So I'm I'm trying to remember what the fuck I saw this weekend. But um, no, I don't think it's going to be an easy. Uh... Listen, I got to tell you this. If we were fucking healthy, we would kick the shit out of you. All right. If we actually had an offensive line and Edelman was back and Amendola was back, and we had a fucking running game and we, we if we were healthy, this is no fucking contest at home. You know it. And I know it right now. Brady is driving a fucking rental car. So you might go in there and beat us and then you're going to get all fucking excited and loud. And then you know what? I don't know. You know, why would I root against you guys? Hey, you know what? You guys, hey, you guys haven't won since what? 1970? All right. What was that? Uh, what was that fucking Hank Stram call? Power trap cross. 57 power trap cross. What the fuck was that thing called? I don't remember. You guys haven't. Uh, when you beat the fucking Vikings. Jesus Christ. Going way back. You beat the AFL team that fucking sold out. Maybe that's why they're cursed. Maybe that's why they've lost. What do they lose? Three, three, four Super Bowls? Three Super Bowls. Right? They lost to the fucking Chiefs. They lost to the Packers. They lost to the Dolphins and they lost to the Steelers. Is that right? Wait, the Dolphins lost to the Cowboys. Then they beat the Vikings and they beat the Redskins. That's right. Chiefs beat the Vikings. Green Bay beat the Chiefs. They didn't beat the Raiders, did they? They beat the Vikings, right? No, the Vikings would have been in the NFL by then. I don't fucking remember. Whatever. You lost like fucking three of them. Maybe because you, you, you didn't stick with the AFL guys. Does that make any sense? Whatever. Good luck to the Chiefs this week. Uh, good luck to the Patriots. Obviously, my heart is with the Patriots, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't not like that Dolphins game where every time Brady, the few times he went back to pass, there was just somebody right in his grill every fucking time. Um, but whatever. At the end of the fucking day, we have the greatest fucking quarterback and coach of all fucking time. So go fuck yourself. I think we're going to beat you. All right. It'd be no fun if I just said good luck to you guys. So fuck you guys. You don't stand a chance there. Now, if you beat me, you got something to talk about. Then you can trash me and I can fill out a fucking hour next week on the podcast. Um, all right. Drive to school. Oh, by the way, Alabama. The dream ends tonight. Alabama Clemson. I have no I don't know shit about either team. I was so fucking busy in the fall. I didn't get to watch any of it. But of course, um, I, I wouldn't care if Alabama won, but Clemson hasn't won in a while, so I'd love to see them win. However, if if Alabama wins, it just makes the Cleveland Browns' futility even funnier to me because the dumbest fucking move ever. Do you realize that they had Bill Belichick and Nick Saban coaching their team, and they fired them? The, the fucking Paul Brown... Vince Lombardi of the modern day NFL and the Paul Brown, Bear Bryant, Vince Lombardi of NCAA Division I football. They had them both coaching together <laughs> and they fired them. So if Alabama, as a Cleveland Brown fan, you have to be rooting for Clemson. You just have to. You guys have had enough fucking pain, right? Who knows? Maybe LeBron can get you over the hump this year, you know? 
Uh, I always root for Cleveland. Like I said, I've, I have relatives, you know, family that grew up out there and all that type of shit. I, uh, I actually love Cleveland. So, um, however, I also love a good joke. So if Alabama wins tonight, it'll still be funny. Anyways, continue on. Drive to school. Hey, Bill, I've been a fan of yours since the O&A days and Chappelle show. Somewhere along the line, I had a kid and he's old enough to listen to some of your podcast. Uh, I listened to it with him on the drive to school. I listened to the whole episode before beforehand and cut out any of the stuff that is a bit heavy or sexual. Um, Jesus, you're a fucking great dad. When you start editing their content, you know, look at you. You're a regular tip of gore. Uh, not because I'm sheltering him, but because he and I don't need, don't need share certain podcast moments. When you talk of jizz and, uh, and some skank before 8 a.m. Exactly. Let the kid have a childhood, uh, trying to keep it light and positive, with the exception of the funny negative. Anyways, I wanted to tell you that it's the best thing we got going. We listen to about 15 minutes a day. It puts him and I in a laughing mood, which he needs. School's a lot of work these days, and he always got a ton of homework and projects and is dragging in the morning. This wakes him up. Sometimes we pause and talk about certain things or I'll explain certain stuff to him about politics, sports, etc., yeah, in other words, correct the dumb shit that I said. All that father-son stuff. Uh, thanks for the parental assist. Ah, that's great. Who would have ever thought my ignorance could be hot woman? Um, anyways, uh, I'm already regretting fucking making fun of Ricky Gervais. Why did I do that shit? But, you know, I mean, he's making fun of everybody on the show. It's only fair, right? They're showing up with fucking acceptance speeches and he's got all those fucking zingers that him and his writing staff wrote. It's only fair. That's why I like Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson gave him shit back. I don't understand why people just go out smiling. They should fucking trash him. Uh, vasectomy. Uh, dear Bill, I don't want to get a vasectomy. I just don't. My wife and anyone else who chimes in on the subject started trying to break down positives and point out the lack of negatives. Ever just not want something? I just don't want one. Can you believe this? Or are you with everyone else that it must be rooted in some fear, etc.? Fuck that. Dude, fuck that. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you think you could fucking tell a woman what the fuck to do with her body for two seconds before she just said you're a, you're a chauvinistic cunt? Yeah. Dude, fuck that. Fuck that all day long. That's your fucking dick and balls. All right? Not that they fuck with your dick. If you don't fucking want them to go in there and snip, snip, whatever the fuck. I've even looked up the operation. I still don't get it. I don't get it. Nothing comes out. So does it stop your ability to make jizz? Do they put an udder down there where you got to milk the jizz out? Say, oh, that's disgusting. I, I, I don't get I don't get what happens, but fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Just just sit down with your wife and say, listen, I don't want to do that. And she'll be like, why? Why not? You're just a, you're just fear based. It's like, no, it isn't. I don't want to be walking around and it like, dude, you know what that's like? You're like a muscle car and they want to rip the engine out and put a fucking V6 in there. Fuck you. And keep your Shelby badge on the side of your car. And every day in the morning you wake up. Standing there looking at yourself after you got out of the shower, knowing that it's a lie. Fuck that, dude. Fuck, you keep the bullets in that gun. All right? She can't handle it, you know? I, I, you know, what is she going to do to you? Huh? She going to hold you down and make while someone else does it? Just, yeah, you don't want one. Dude, you don't want one to the level you're reaching out to a fucking podcast. Okay? Do you understand? I would even use that in your argument. Just be like, but uh, don't play this audio, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, listen, I so do not want to do this that I actually wrote into a podcast to get advice. That's how much I don't want to do this. And then she'll just be like, well, maybe we need to go talk to somebody about it, which means she's going to set up an appointment with somebody who agrees with her. All right, because she's going to set up the appointment going, listen, my husband needs to get a vasectomy. He's very nervous. He says he doesn't want to get it, but I, it's going to be the best for us. And she's going to totally set the fucking table. It's like those dumb fucks that go on Dr. Phil. You ever see those sad sacks that go on that fucking show with their wife like they have a fucking prayer? 
Dr. Phil's audience is women. So he's going to have to side with the woman every fucking time. Even if he, you know, he's going to try to, you know, hide his hand and give her a little bit of shit. But at the end of the day, he's going to be looking at you go, you need to get your balls snipped. Right? He's going to come at you like that while he sits there, you know, with his junk still fucking working. You know, he's got a giant fucking unit. Doesn't he do that big fucking goof, that big bald goof walking down the hall? <laughs> you know, he's got a fucking giant fucking unit. Big, great, great Dane balls. <laughs> I don't know why. I think he's got a fucking giant unit. He does. He's just like, he's just dirt, but dirt. The way he talks, he's just, God always gives them big dicks. It just, I don't know what it is. Um,. <laughs> This giant size 16 brown wooden wingtips just sitting across from you. This got to be the worst fucking show ever to be on. Oh, my God. I never thought about Dr. Phil's junk before. You see that? It takes somebody to fucking bring up a vasectomy. You'll never be able to think about him again. Me and my big dick say you need to listen to your wife. All right. Jumping out of a plane. Hey, Bill. Where are you at on jumping out of a plane? Uh, If you're a chicken shit American, I'm a Brit. How much money would it take you to jump? Uh, I got a bet with my mate that you hate heights and it'd take 500,000 U.S. dollars. Don't change your answer to be contrary to what I just guessed. Keep it fair, good sir. Thanks. Jesus, another arrogant Brit. (laughs) These guys think they're fucking geniuses. Um, I've already done it, you fucking idiot, and I paid someone to do it. I paid. I went to uh, in Pepperell, Massachusetts when I was 19 years old, and I didn't do a tandem jump either. I did a static line jump. I've told this story on the podcast, sir, if you're a little bit um, more up on it. Uh and also, I have a pilot's license. I fly helicopters. So if I was afraid of heights, I mean, I'm afraid of heights. Look, if I don't have a parachute on my back and I'm not in a, in a, uh, in a vehicle that's designed to fly, then, yes, I'm afraid of heights. Like, I don't, like, uh, you know, like, if you, like, one time I watched a YouTube video. And they just showed these guys that had to climb up to the top of this fucking building. And then, no, not climb. To the, well, they took the elevator. Who's getting hooked? They, they, they were on the roof. And it was already on the fucking roof. This building was so fucking high up. And you know the wind up there must be ridiculous. I would literally just lay down in the fetal position and crawl back to the fucking door that leads to the stairwell. Reach up to the handle. And fucking go back down. But this this dude um, then climbs the fucking, the, the, the whatever, the, the, the radio tower or whatever. And it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And, and the tower gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And he's hooking and unhooking his safety line. I literally, I, I couldn't, I mean, obviously the guy lived because it's his GoPro on his helmet and I've never been so fucking unsettled watching something in my life. Okay. Then I would hate heights. But I think at that point, everybody hates heights. But um, yeah, when I was 19 years old, I went to uh, this place uh, in Pepperell, Massachusetts, which I don't think exists anymore. There might still be an airport there. And they had a, uh, a school. And uh, you, I did the static line jump. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, Fandango, one of Kevin Costner's earlier ones. Where the dude from uh, Breakfast Club, uh, Judd Nelson, his character jumps out. Um, That's exactly what I did. And I remember when we went up, the command was sit in the door, get out. And then he slapped you on the shoulder and said, go. And uh, I remember when he said sit in the door, I thought he was saying close the door. So I was reaching up. I'm sitting down, reaching up, trying to close the door. And he had this big smile on his face like he thought I was chickening out. I feel like I just told this story on the podcast. And 
Then I finally realized he was saying sit in the door. So you sit in the door, and basically it's one of those planes where the the wing is above the aircraft. You know what I mean? It's on top of the aircraft as opposed to below, which actually gives you much better sight, I would think, um, as far as if you wanted to look down. Um, and then there's the support that goes to the side of the plane. So, And then right above one of the landing wheels, the wheels don't retract on this plane, they had uh, welded a little step. So <laughs> you sat in the fucking door. And uh, I forget how high we were. I want to say we were only like 1,500. We weren't that high up because your chute immediately comes out. Um, so you sat, you, you sit in the door, then he goes, get out. And then what you do is you reach out and you grab that support beam from the wing and you hold on to that while one of your feet is, uh, is standing on that little step thing. And then basically what you do is I'm literally acting this out so I can remember it is you then basically you, you bend your arms and you bring your chest like flush with the support beam. And then the, the, the foot that's dangling, you put it straight out behind you. It's almost like a yoga pose. So we sit in the door, get out, and then he slaps your shoulder and he goes, go. And you let go. And then you, you arch. You arc, right? Arc, one, arc 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Look. If nothing, look. Reach, pull. And when you're looking, you're looking over your, your shoulder to see if your chute came out. And then if nothing, you look down at the handle <clears throat> reach, pull it. Because for some reason they say if you don't look down, you might be flailing. Because you're panicking because it's the first time you jumped and the chute didn't come out. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, cayenne pepper. Ah, hang on a second. So, anyways, I get out. He goes, go. I let go. And instead of arching, I, I don't know what I did. I just reached for something. All I know is I started doing front fl front flips as my chute was coming out. And I felt it go by my leg, the inside of my leg. I felt it go by my leg. I f felt something hit that. And I was immediately thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to roll right up in this fucking thing. Like, you know, when you put bacon on shrimp. And uh, th the second I had that thought. Like the chute already had come out. And by the grace of God, I didn't get tangled up. I think about that sometimes, like how easily I could have fucking died. Um, and then, boom, your chute comes out. And when your chute comes out, you don't even feel like you're falling because there's nothing going past you because you're above the tree line and all that. So you just feel like you're just sort of suspended in the air. And uh, there was a radio and this lady just talked you in. She say, pull the left toggle, and you had to pull it all the way down to your knee. Because I remember there was this this big girl in the class, and she couldn't get it around her hips, and uh, she landed across the street in a pile of loom and uh, dislocated her knee. I remember that before, and, and then I went up after her, and I was just like, "Fuck." Um, and then they have this ridiculous, you know, when you get to the tree line, you suddenly realize how fast you're falling. I think it was like 17 feet per second, or maybe 11 feet. I can't remember, but it was really fast. It was like basically you know, jumping off of a, of a basketball rim, like how fast you'd come down. It had to be a little bit slower, right? I don't know, because you're not reaching terminal velocity. I don't fucking know. So all I know is when you hit the ground, what you were supposed to do is look straight ahead. Because for some reason, if you look down at your feet, what you were going to do, they were worried you'd pick your feet up too quickly and somehow break your legs. So what you had to do is look straight ahead, and as right as you hit the ground... You're supposed to do this little fucking like collapse down and then this big ridiculous bring your both your legs straight up in the air and then over to your side. I don't know why. I doubt that they still have people do that. And I did what everybody else did is I came down and the second my feet hit the ground, I did a face plant <laughs> right into the grass. And my buddy grabbed the uh, the mic from the person and called me a dickhead, something like that. What a dickhead or something in the... Um in the in the radio um so yeah there you go so i did it and what are you basing chicken shit american on huh all you tough guys over there with your fish and chips have you done it yet 500 you there's nothing you can some, if i don't want to do something I, I i wouldn't do it there's not money that you can give me i know he goes oh give me a fucking break no i'm making great money i got enough money 
I got enough money. I'm good. To take my life in my fucking hands? No. That's one of those things. Now, now when I was back working at the warehouse, I mean, granted, I pay somebody. When I was working in a fucking warehouse, I, uh, shit, you know, let's see. How much would they, I mean, if they gave me, literally, if you gave me $400, you would have doubled my pay for the week. So I would have done that. Well, let's see. Let's go back to the building. To climb up that building, how much money would they have to give me? Uh, when I was working in the warehouse, uh, eight hundred dollars. Um, and that now for that that building, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, I, I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's not. I'm all right. I'm all set. I'm all set. I, you know, I should actually send you guys that video. Um. So it's not that I hate heights, sir. I hate um, risking my life to that level. If there's like a parachute or something like that, and there's a bungee cord or there's like a fucking safety line, that's fine. But you know, going up that tower where I have to unhook the safety line and then hook it back up and there's wind and shit, fuck that. That's too much of a risk. I wouldn't do that. But, uh, you know. I don't fuck. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right, college cooking. Dear Billy Boy ID. Oh, that's a great one. What a great one. Billy, Billy Boy ID. Oh, fuck. I got to wrap this up. This guy's coming in 12 minutes. Uh, I'm sure everyone is blowing you up to make another cooking video, so don't worry. This isn't that. I'm a college student. I know you've lived like a college student into your th- early 30s from past stories about living with Bobby Kelly. Oh, Dude, we weren't living like college students. We were living like fucking animals. Uh, do you have any menu suggestions besides pasta? What would you mix together? I'm pretty cr- creative and I do all right, but I'm open to some suggestions. What's good to throw together on a budget and on a fly? You know what, dude? I would go to, um, I would, this is what I would do. I would go on YouTube. And I would ask that question and you'll find videos and then just start searching. And at some point you're going to connect with somebody. And I feel like I'm, you know, dropping the ball here on the question, but like, I'm not a chef. I'm not even a cook. I'm really early on this to this myself. So that's what I would do. There's a bunch of old episodes of Mario, Mario Batali's Molto Mario, M O L T O Mario. Um, I really suggest watching those. Just watch the guy. I used to just watch the show and just by watching it, you learn things and you start to see how things are made. Um, and and uh, the big thing is not having – you just have to, to – to learn shit in life, you got to have the – the mindset of like, I'm, you know, I'm going to fuck this up probably the first time and that's all right. And then I'll get a little better. Like the pasta, I already just even just running it through the pasta maker. I already have like three, three fucking things that I'm not going to do the next time. Um, and by the way, somebody gave me a great tip when you after you've uh, kneaded the dough and you put it through your pasta maker. Be sure to to douse like both sides with flour. Be liberal with the flour because if you don't, it's going to tear it could tear when you're in there because it's supposed to be like sticky and elastic at the same time. And uh, when you run it through there, um, yeah, you could you could possibly have some issues. And it tears and it's a big fucking pain in the ass. And then you get sad. You feel like a fucking failure. And you're not. You had the balls to try it. So I would uh, I'd go that. Rachel Ray's got a great bunch of great ones from back in the day. Everybody always makes fun of her. But she would she? I make 20 minute meals. He that little fucking laugh she do. I used to watch her shit all the time. That's great shit for probably where you're at. But I, w- I would also Google some stuff like that. Um, but it's great as a college student. If you start to learn how to cook, if you start to learn how to cook right now and you do it religiously, you are going to be a fucking beast compared to the average person. Um. By the, by the time you're in your 30s, dude, forget it. And if you add like shit like learning how to me- how to make a pie crust, because then, then you can make turkey pot pie, you can make quiche, you can make all of this shit. You start making homemade pasta, forget it. It's fucking over. Then you learn how to do all this other stuff. I forget what, I mean, I made it with Nia. I was really concentrating on making the pasta. She did the bolognese and then she did the whole milk sauce thing. 
But I just was watching her do that where you heated up some butter and some flour and then you heated up some milk. Then you poured the whole thing together instead of using like uh, ricotta cheese um, or any of that type of shit. Um, you used this really rich milk thing. It was almost too much. The fucking dish was like, it almost tasted like a dessert. It was so fucking good. But um, I didn't know how to do shit when I was your age. So I think it's great that you're doing it. Um, you know, you want, how about Blue Apron? Sign up for that shit and just, you know, steal some of their meal ideas and then expand on them. If there's a, or if there's a style of cooking that they give you, then you go on YouTube and uh, you just start looking at recipes about that. Like, you know what I, I don't know anything about, which is weird because I love the food, is any sort of Asian-style um, cooking. I actually smoked some ribs, and I, and I had this, uh, this dipping sauce that was like a, a, a you know, whatever, ch- uh, Chinese or Japanese influenced, you know, with the fucking soy sauce and all that. And it was, and I was in a part of the grocery store that I never went to. And it was the shit. It tasted great. And um, that's something I was kind of thinking this year. I want to get down pasta and and start to have some uh, Asian-type dishes in there. So if there's anybody out there that can help me with that, I'd appreciate it. So anyways, the guy's coming here in eight minutes. I got to upload this fucker. Um, I'll talk to you later. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Anything Better podcast, NFL edition, going into wild card super wild card weekend they're calling it super because there's a monday night game i mean there's saturday i mean it's sunday games um the regular season is over everybody so now it is let's be honest paul there's a lot of teams out there that have no business being in the playoffs they just added all of these rounds to make money that's why it's super so they can get bigger yachts bigger mountains of cocaine and a lot more horse but you know what paul we have nothing better to do so let's talk about these games (laughs) well what team do you think doesn't belong there um, Texans, uh, the Dolphins oh. couldn't put away the Bills. Oh, uh, the Rams, what are they going to do? And the Buccaneers, even though I like Baker Mayfield, like this whole thing, it's this is like T ball. How many second place teams, Paul, are you going to invite to the dance? You weren't pretty enough. Yeah, you're Indeed. staying home on prom night, but not on super wild card weekend, Paul. Yeah, you know what? Next we should have started a flag football game. We probably could have played the fucking Bill, Packers. Next year, it's going to be super duper wild. <laughs> super duper two <laughs> wacky wild weeks of it. I love how they added an extra week of football and then like nobody played. It was like uh, they should call that backup weekend. That's a great point. It's like it's an extra week and Mahomes and Kelsey are in hoodies. Laughing. I love it. And they didn't play, and the owners still had to pay him. It's fantastic. Although they would have just done that in week 16. Yeah. Paul, um, you got a lot of buttons. A lot of buttons, and they're all buttoned up. You joining the right. military? Well, huh? You got somebody huh? coming by, checking out, uh, you know, with a white glove? Um, dude, Did you just wake what? up? I'm sorry. No. I had a cup of coffee. I'm being a douche. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Uh, speaking of white glove, there was this North Korean chick on Rogan. And Rogan goes, what is it, what is like, what like constitutes somebody getting like executed in your country? And she goes, every, every room in the house has to have one of the Kims, a portrait of one of the Kims, either Kim Jong-un or the son or whatever. Right. And at any time. That's their live, love, laugh signs. Yeah. And, and, and and you have to have it in every room. And Mm -hmm. she said to Rogan that the government could break in in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning and they come in and they actually put a white glove on. And if there's dust, if those pictures aren't like pristine and perfect, you could be imprisoned for life or executed. Yeah. You can't, you're not, he's not going to last. Um, yeah. Anyway, you can't, you can't, you can't be doing that to people. Speaking eventually of- they rebel. <laughs> Let's get into fun. Let's get into fight. Hey, Paul, you know what? I don't know. There's something about this weekend feels a little super. Uh, first, guys, we got a shout you know out. What's funny the, is uh, nobody says super anymore. It's kind of funny how you don't think about the Super Bowl. Well, super Bowl. Well, I'm no, but I'm saying like it's just they said it so long ago. And you don't really think about it. like no one goes super. Hey, hey, Paul, you, you want to meet tomorrow tomorrow at five o'clock? Super. No, super. yeah. Like nobody don't- says that. Super. Like, what if they called it the far out bowl? You know, that's when they need. 
then this would be the far out fucking wild card weekend, man. The groovy, <laughs> the groovy bowl, baby. The out of sight bowl, out of sight bowl. <laughs> the my man bowl. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of weird that they and i never really thought about that but paul i'm not a thinker um all right everybody we got to shout out our sponsor it's bet mgm everybody we got a new promotion this week we got a new promotion for super wild car weekend here's what it here's what you do you could bet five dollars and you get 158 instantly place your first bet to the bet mgm sports book okay uh through your mobile i don't understand how they make money doing that and uh, you give at least five dollars. Okay, you give at least five dollars. You will receive 158 instantly in additional uh, winnings, regardless of your wages outcome. What you do is you download the BetMGM app. Uh, you visit BetMGM.com. You sign up and you deposit at least five dollars into your newly created account. You place a wager in that account at least five dollars uh, at standard odds price. You use our, obviously using our bonus code BURR, B-U-R-R, -R, very simple. Once you have placed a bet, you receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. There you go, everybody. $5 gets you $158 so you could enjoy super wild card, wild card weekend. Super wild card weekend. We have a lot I'll tell you, Paul, I am fucking amped up for this weekend. I am. It's going to be super. Dude, Wild Card Weekend's my favorite. I like Wild Card Weekend better than Divisional. I, this is my favorite weekend. Well, you're a positive guy. You fucking like everything. You like you like bad weather. Who doesn't He's like, like I'm a weather guy. Bill, it's snowing back here. I fucking love it. I'm up to my fucking ass in snow that I have to shovel. And you you love it, Paul. I don't know. That's what I got. I hire you, a guy. You, you're like a 35-year-old Santa Claus. You're just in a good fucking mood. Your beard hasn't gone white yet, you know? Listen, well, here's what it is. Paulie Christmas. You live longer that way. God willing, knock on wood. Um, oh, Paul, you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be the guy everybody wants to be. He's always in I a good mood. I think that's why he beats the book every year. He just he thinks positive. Listen, three years in a row. What's it gonna take until I get my recognition? How many? I mean, years? you should get some sort of a trophy, a ring, something. something. You a know concession what? call. I feel like are I'm they gonna go Donald Trump and they're not gonna concede and say that you cheated? I keep getting the franchise tag on this thing. I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again. I'll fucking do it again. You want me to do it again? Right. Hey, I don't think anybody's betting against you, dude. I Three years in a row. Is, that's not I a fluke, Paul. By 17 games. I think I beat it by 17 or 16 and a half. Come for me. I'm coming for you, Stephen A. I'm coming for Wait, you. Wait, you, you over three years, 16 or no, of no, this no. year? 16 this year. Last year was like. Well, then why did you wait till the second week and be like, mathematically, I can fucking. I got him. I thought you were only up by like three or four games. That's incredible. Hang on one second. Hey, I'm doing a podcast. Let me call you right back. <laughs> All right, let's get into this, now. Bill. The <clears throat> first game. The oh, first it's going to be a super one, Paul. It's going to hey, be Andrew, far up. By the way, Andrew, how are we doing this, buddy? Are we. Are we picking each like there's only a certain amount of games? Are we just picking this together? What's going on here? Uh yeah, whatever you want to do. Last right. year, last year, I think you guys just picked every game together. All right. So the first game we got is we got the Cleveland Browns. We got the what Cleveland, do you got? We got the Cleveland Browns on the road. Give me something. Oh, Cleveland is actually a, a road favorite, two and a half. They're laying two and a half in Houston against the Texans. I like uh, the Texans. What? I like the Texans. Oh, you didn't like that. I like the Texans. No, no, no. I was trying to hear what you said. Um, oh, it's a tough one. Joe Flacco, you know, is a four. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting Joe Flacco. And who's who's having more fun than him, Paul? It's a tough game. Let's be honest. It's not the greatest game on the list. Would you call it super? Gun to my head. Yeah, I'll take the Texans at home. That rookie quarterback had a great. I don't want to you know, do. I want to root for Joe Flacco. Well, you could you could pick your pick. I make my pick. Oh, okay. I just needed your permission. I'm sorry. I'm going to take the Texans. You talked me out of it. <laughs> Listen, I don't give a fuck because this doesn't count against my record. I just want to enjoy the game. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Browns because I like Joe Flacco. I like the Browns. You know, 
The Texans. I mean, they're, they're still an expansion franchise to me. That's the Houston Oilers, and they went to fucking Nashville. You know what? You know what? You're right. I'm actually... I got to go with the better defense. I do like TJ Stroud. I like what the Texans did, but they had to win the last game to get in or whatever. I'm going to take the Browns too. I like that pick. I think the Browns better defense and Joe Flacco's experience. Uh, I'll take the Cleveland Browns too. Listen, my last what year. If, what if he just went on a fucking run? Imagine he won the Super Bowl, dude. That's what I'm saying. How, how fun would that be? Dude, if Joe Flacco won the Super Bowl with the Browns, that would be, <laughs> they make a movie out of that, dude. Yeah. That's that'd be ring number two, and then he's in the hall. But it's not happening. Um, oh, Paul, I mean, this is a super weekend. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think that would be pretty super if he did that. I'll go as far as to say only one the team on this. Deaky bowl. <laughs> only only one team on this list. What do we got? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Only one team out of these twelve teams is going to the Super Bowl in this one, and the other team ain't on this list because they ain't playing this weekend. Yeah. Um. All right. I like, I'm with well, Bill. I'm still with this Purdy guy. He's throwing the ball before they even turn around. It's like everybody does that. They do that at all levels. It's called quarterback. Yeah, it's called being a quarterback. What, are you supposed to wait till the D-backs also looking? <laughs> do you realize the level of skill that takes? Um, uh, I'm not saying the 49ers are a bad team. I'm just saying they just, they're, 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 they're selling this kid. All right. Okay. So I'm going with the Browns minus two and a half. I'm going with the Browns minus two and a half, too. I like that. I'm fucking I'm Joe Flacco. That's my guy. I'm fucking I'm going with the Browns. I'm rooting for them in the AFC. All right. AFC. So both of us are going with the Browns. Next game, by the way, I was like one in seven last year's playoffs. I need a bounce back playoff year. I was terrible. Well, you put your feet up on the table. You beat the book. <laughs> you were feeling good. You lit the cigar. I lit, I lit a and cigar. It wasn't early. over. I lit a cigar too early. <laughs> <laughs> Gather around. Let me tell you how to make money in this business. Paul, you're 0 4 right now. What? We got- <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you lost all the you lost all the playoffs. Whispering games. in your ear like fucking George W on 9 <laughs> 11. You got kidding. that look on your face? Uh, all right. Next game, we got the Dolphins plus four and a half at Arrowhead uh, against the Chiefs. Uh, we all know what's going to happen in this game. I know they got Nick Kroll, the whiz kid, and this and that, and the Chiefs are struggling, and beep a da a doo a doo Travis Kelsey's going to be stomping around in the end zone, fucking blowing kisses to, uh, you know, his girlfriend. Taylor, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, the biggest gangster in fucking entertainment today. She's beating all those bastards, Paul. She's yeah, I gotta all. take the Chiefs. I gotta see it. It's one of those where I gotta see it. It's I gotta see the Chiefs lose. They're not gonna. I don't think Super Bowl defending Super Bowl champs. They rested up last week. I like the Chiefs as well. Mm-hmm. All right, that brings us to the Steelers and the Bills. Okay, this the Buffalo one's Bills one. finally living up to their potential. Big win last week, Paul. They beat the Miami Dolphins down there in Miami. Reminded the Dolphins of who they are. They're a destination city for a vacation. They're a place where you go after you get your pilot's license to consider trafficking cocaine into this country. What they are not, Paul, is a professional football city. Well, I'm going to (laughs) take... I'm sick of them living off the fucking undefeated dolphins from 1972, Paul. It was 52 fucking years ago. Enough already. They had two white running backs. (laughs) <laughs> with Tom Selleck mustaches. <laughs> he did. Um, Nobody ever did it since, man. Listen, I think All the right. Buffalo Bills, I think the Buffalo Bills are going to beat the Steelers. I think the Buffalo Bills are going to go to the Super Bowl, but I do However, not think, I don't think they're going to beat the Steelers by 10. So I'm taking the points. I think the Bills win the game. I don't think they win it by more than 10. I like the Steelers getting points on the road. Mike Tomlin's team is tough. Another winning season. Uh, listen, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's one of those franchises that just show up. It's just a great franchise. I love the 10 points. We're starting 10 uh, I have to agree with you. I like the 10 points too. Uh, I keep feeling like Josh Allen's going to have like his breakout game where he gets on the same pages with, with, with what's his face. He keeps overthrowing him there. Stefan Diggs. It's going to happen one of these weeks, Paul. One of these weeks. I feel like in the playoffs, they're going to have a bloodbath. I love that. I so you kind of think it's going to happen early 
And the Steelers, you know, the Steelers, they're like, this is what we're doing. And they don't make halftime adjustments. They don't fire head coaches. They, Wait, they like don't the listen to the American Heart Association. I'm trying to work this out, Paul. I'm doing the okay. math. All right. <laughs> you're confusing me here. You How like can I point? enjoy this super wild card weekend if, if, if you're in my ear like that? <laughs> super duper. Super duper. <laughs> you jive turkey. Um, uh, why am I going to do this? This is stupid. I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills. I just feel like they're going to score a lot of touchdowns. And they're going to be fucking talking to the camera like that coach of the Eagles. And then, you know, probably next week they're going to lose. But I think this week they're going to make a statement. Everybody's going to be like, is this a little bit and fucking back in August? It's probably what's going to happen. I, I, I like that. Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs. They finally get it. They play a little hurry up. Collinsworth called it last week. He's like, is it me or does he play better when they, when they fucking they go faster? He dropped the F-bomb. Nobody heard it because he got such a gravelly voice. I'm going to take the Bills. Minus 10. At home, um, that's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna do. Son right, of Bill, a bitch! All right, all right, Bills got the Bills. Son of a bitch! Laying ten. I got the Steelers getting ten. Um, I think the Bills win it by like six. All right, next game: Packers Cowboys. Cowboys are seven and a half point favorites in Dallas against the Packers. Uh, and Jordan Love, good team, man. It's a tough one. It's a tough spread, too. I hate that half a point. Yeah. And uh, both of these teams are a little wishy-washy, Paul. Like, if yeah. you were going to rob a bank, you're not going in with either one of these teams. They're not sitting in the getaway car. <laughs> when you come out of the that, bank with the, with, the, with, the, with the bag of money, are they, are they going to be there or are they not? That is perfect. I am not robbing a bank with the Cowboys. Or the Packers. <laughs> or the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> convenience store maybe i'll, I'll steal some m&ms with the packers and the cowboys but i am not i am not going federal with these fucks no um you know what just because it's fun i'm gonna take it paul super why can't i have a good time i'm gonna go with the packers getting seven and a half i really like jordan love i am and i'm really hoping that he's gonna be uh continue the tradition of incredible quarterbacks in green bay because this is another thing too paul like what you're watching here, Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, and then if Jordan Love does it, I mean, yeah. you talk. I haven't seen Paul. We've never seen that. That's like Ruth, Garrig. Well, they're all the way up to Mickey Mantle, Paul. I was listening. I was listening to something on the radio, and and this guy called in and he said something. I forgot Dimaggio. Like, they're up to Dimaggio. Sorry, sorry, New York seven one eight. Sorry. He said. Um, he said something. That's why our show is the best because we give the best information. But here's the deal. And we're humble. A little bit. You are. <laughs> the humbleness comes up. The humbleness comes up. Paul, you beat the book three years in a row. I mean, I, I can't believe you're fucking not wearing I'm the a best handicapper in the country. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to stay in the business. In the business. <laughs> in the business. I'm the best handicapper in the business. Um, when we do Vegas, Paul, I'm going to make sure that crowd gives you your fucking respect. <laughs> God, you put respect it. on this man's name. That's going to be oh, such a fun show. Put a little respect on no. Um, Aaron Rodgers stayed on the. They said holding a clipboard, as they say, behind Brett Favre for two years, getting frustrated. Learned the system. Then this kid learned the system. I actually think it makes sense for teams with a good quarterback that's halfway or kind of towards the end. Draft a young quarterback and let the kid sit on the bench for two years and learn the learn the system. I think that's why. You know, these guys that come in and they just get thrown to the wolves? No. I, I, I don't know why they do that either. No. I also don't know why they go forward on fourth down. There's a lot of things Paul I don't understand anymore, but I, I've let go of them. I'm still going to bring like, them up. It's like a gonna... kid A kid starts a quarterback for BYU. He wins a big bowl game. And next thing you know, he's playing on Sundays starting against the fucking, against the Eagles. It's like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Well, this time of year, I think it does work against the Eagles. Speaking I of which, I shouldn't have used eagles. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have used eagles. All right, uh, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually go opposite Bill on this one. I think Dak Prescott and CD Lamb are really on the same page. I think the Cowboys win this game by ten or more. I think they're gonna rush this young quarterback, and he's well, gonna... they're on the same page. It's the fucking nineteenth game, eighteenth game of the season. They're wearing the same uniform. It yeah, goes like this when he's open. But they're clicking big, is what I'm saying. Unlike. Hey, Paul. Unlike Diggs and that guy. Well, actually, Diggs and them are coming along too, but I like the Cowboys to win by 10. I'm going to take the Cowboys as much as it hurts me to say that as a Giants fan. 
Um, next game, we got the Rams. Oh, dude, this is a game. This is Matthew an interesting Stafford. game. Stafford. Matthew Stafford going against his old team. Oh, shit. In Detroit. In Detroit, oh, man. Dad, I got the lines because they disrespected uh, uh, Jared Goff. 100%. And I also, I also, I, I loved, you know, as much as I fucking hate the way they call some of these games, I love that he went for it again on the two point conversion against the, uh, was it against the Cowboys that game? Yeah, I like that. I like that he went for it again. Like, fuck you. This is what we're doing. I like that coach. I'm with you 100%. I love the Lions in this game. I love the Lions in this game. This is a Jared Goff revenge game. I love What's it. What's the coach of the Lions? I keep looking it up. I'm Dan the Campbell. Worst. Dan Campbell. I want him to do a wrestling promo. Yeah. He's the Triple H of fucking head coaches. You know, you just look, you know, the guy played the game. No, he's great. He's great. He goes, and then when we're on our way up, we're going to bite their kneecaps on the way up. He just said some shit and everyone's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's going in. You know what he is? He's like, he's like the third lead in like the Predator movie. <laughs> you can just see him in there. He takes yeah. Jesse the body's part. I love that guy. Um, but it's going to be interesting as far as like, um, this is a huge challenge for them. Even though they're, they're, they're three point favorites. I just feel like the experience with the coach. And I think Matthew Stafford at this point is still a better quarterback. Proving himself. The guy's got a ring. I can't, I can't argue that. I can't argue. Who am I? I mean, hey, Paul, you know, you're just the guy who beats the book. No, no, you're right. You're just I the think, best in the business, Paul. I think I think Matthew Stafford is a slightly better, but I think the Lions are a better team. And the Wait, Lions am I the Scotty better. Pippen of this show? Am I going to start to resent you after a while <laughs> when I don't get the ball at the end of the game? <laughs> um, we both love Oh, Billy Lions. Pippen. I'll be honest with you. I think the line's too low. I think the Lions win the game by a touchdown, no? Hey, Paul, I mean, that would be super because I'm taking the Lions. I'm taking the what Lions. a super wild card weekend that would be. All right. And this brings us, Paul, to a game oh, that the, Jake the snake, Jake oh, the snake, Jake the snake coming in. By the way, ladies, check out the stubble. The man is single. <laughs> the man is available. And he very quietly, Paul, very quietly. You know what you are, Paul? You're, you're like fucking you're the Teflon Don. You're out there with the canary yellow suit talking. This guy right here. <laughs> this guy right here, he's got the president's phone number. <laughs> I like the stubble, Jake. You're looking good, bud. Thanks. Once Bill stamped it, I knew I, knew I had to keep it. As you got to keep it, dude. You get a little swagger. That's what you need, man. You're, you're fucking crushing it. What do you got for us? Thank you. Um, you know, just kind of put in here by uh, by Andrew, but I think you guys are on to something with those picks. Um, I, I especially agree with the Chiefs one. I think that's a tough matchup for Miami. It's going to be like zero degrees there, too. Um, yeah, they're so not going to play well in that. They're going to try to no. shut down Tyreek Hill. Though Tyreek coming back to his house, though. So you're liking what we, we what, what we're doing so far? Yeah, maybe um, with the Lions Rams, I'm a little bit on the Rams. But you guys kind of kind of won me over with that argument about the the Lions. Uh, they're going to be amped up. I think it's the first time they made the playoffs in quite. Jake, some time, don't listen so. to us. Hey, Jake, do we have any? Uh, Jake, do we have any injuries? Is there any, anybody anybody out? Anybody hurt? Uh, not that I know of. Um, I think if anything, the injuries are going to be in the Eagles game. Um, I saw Hertz and AJ Brown got injured in that Giants game. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like that they're going to play. Is, yeah, they're going the to play. They're going to play. Yeah. All right. It's, it playoffs, you know, people don't sit out as much, you know. Um, but yeah. What it's if gonna, Jake it's was actually super. like a superhero and this is just his fucking alter ego? Uh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> 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 I, I wouldn't lose so much money, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. That'd be sweet. All right. Okay, All right. Jake. Well, thanks it's, for it's checking in. There you yeah. go. We got hey, that was snake. fucking super. That was a super Jake the Snake. Hot take, Jake. Um, All right, Paul. So now we got. <laughs> it's a Monday night special. <laughs> what did he say? That would, that would be. Wait, Andrew. This is a Monday night special, right? Because it's Monday night. Uh yeah. If you want. All right, Monday night special. All right. All right, dude. We. This How, is a Paul. Oh. You explain to me. Where the Eagles were in November, that not only are they playing on Super Wild Card Weekend, they are on the fucking road. Well, Bill, let going me going to this. Tampa, Paul. A lot of titty bars. Let me ask you a lot this, of Bill. titty bars. Bill, you're a little older than me. You've been watching football longer a than me. A little. I got ten years on you, youngster. When is the last time you saw a team? T I'm serious. This is a serious question. I'm not even joking around. When is the last time you saw a team ten and one in the NFL, ten and one, and then lose? Every other game but one after that. Like, do you do you remember that or no? Without a major injury, I think they're hurt, Paul. 
I think, and they're just not telling people because the, you know they they have a they have a solid coach. Can't call them great till they win it, right? Is that fair? Um, Can't call them great till they win it. Yeah, all he's done is premium blend. Remember that show, Comedy Central? <laughs> um, listen, I think that this is the game that they need. Uh, I think even injured that they're going to go in there and they're going to uh, they're going to out football on Paul. That's just what's going to happen. They're going to be better on special teams. They just they're just going to be better in all facets of the game. I love Baker Mayfield and all of that, but I kind of feel like everybody down there is surprised that they are in the playoffs where the Eagles are kind of like, what the fuck happened? We need to right this ship. I just feel like they're going to be more playing desperate. Like we can't go out like this. Well, the only thing Paul is, it's just a lot of titty bars in Tampa. And that's something that we need to consider. It It is. There's some tanned up titties. This is eyes and ass down there, Paul. This is just gorgeous. Tough. Just make 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 some make some man abandon a family, Paul. The <laughs> amount of friends I had <laughs> that went down to Tampa, and I was worried that they were going to choose Scientology because it started right there <laughs> in Clearwater, and that's what we always thought. Oh, we like, oh my God, L. Ron Hubbard got another one. That that persuasive son of a bitch, and it wasn't Paul. It wasn't. You come down there, Paul, and you'd see him sitting in the corner in the dark drinking out of a half coconut. A side Splitters Comedy Club has broken up more marriages. Oh. <laughs> Bobby Just, Jewell has taken more comics to titty bars. No, that, that guy's not there anymore. <laughs> oh, he um, isn't. All right. Does Baker Mayfield pull this off to the Tampa? Let's, oh, wait. Okay. If we're just going fun. <laughs> if we're just going fun. I'm a Baker Mayfield guy. I fucking love the guy. All right. You've been on him all year. And you were right. Oh, yeah. I've been on this guy since what's his face is calling. Yeah. What's his face is shitting on him. Oh, Cowherd, Got him yeah. on his show. Yeah. Colin Cowherd. So I, you know, right there, I rooted for him to have a fucking guy in, in the, 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 the sports business, Paul. I mean, he's not as good as you, Paul. You're the best in the business. Okay. But I'd say he's number two. He's in the playoff, right? <laughs> I need to see. He his brought record. him on the show and continued to shit on him. Looking like he can't even throw a ball. Leads the Browns to the playoffs and gets them a victory. Collins still trashes them. Gets bounced around to the Panthers, the Rams, what's going on, but blah, 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 blah. Lands on his feet, and this has happened. And as far as I know, Paul, the man's still getting no respect. You know what I'm going to do, Paul? Just for the fucking fun of it, I'm going to take the Buccaneers plus three, even though I like the Eagles, and I like Nick A. I like that coach. Um, Why not, Paul? Hey, Paul, that's 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 the pregame speech. Why not us? Here's the thing. I think the Buccaneers, I'm with you. I agree. Something is really broken in Philly. You don't lose five out of six of your last games when you're 10 and one. And the coach just looks completely fucking baffled in the press conference. He's going, we need to dig down deep. Something is wrong. Jalen Hurts. These guys are hurt. He's not baffled. What, he forget how to coach football? They're fucking hurt, Paul. I'm telling you they're hurt. And he has to sit there and take one for the team. Bill, everybody's he hurt. He can't everybody's go out hurt. there. Everybody's hurt. Uh, you, you're speaking in hyperbole. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm going to take Buccaneers. I think the Buccaneers are going to fucking... I think these. Nick is, is taking one for the team by saying, you know, we got to dig down. We got to blah, blah, blah. We got to blah, 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 blah. Because he's not going to say... Three of my linemen can barely stand on their fucking big toe because of this and that. And fucking this guy's got a hamstring. He's, he's not going to do that, Paul. Well, um, Chad Ocho Cinco, what's his name? Chad Johnson was on Inside the NFL. And he said best something fucking like, show. The best show out there right now. And he said Fantastic. something I completely disagree with. He goes, he, and, and you could tell the other hosts were like, what? He goes, the Eagles are playing possum. <laughs> and what's his name? What? You don't play possum and lose home field advantage. You don't play possum to lose a bye week. <laughs> you don't go, hey, All right, maybe possum was the wrong wrong word. Hey, Bill, let's make our road rougher to really throw people off. Let's add some drama to this. No. Uh, the thing is, they're just, yeah, I, I like Baker Mayfield. They're flying high down there in Tampa. Uh, but we got to do a, a special. So we'll take the Bucks and the three points. 
Oh, now we're getting into money. I was going with my heart with Baker Mayfield. I'll tell you, Paul, I got a, I have a feeling the Bills and the Eagles are going to try to reestablish themselves this weekend. They want to beat the fuck out of both teams. Well, the Bills are already reestablished. The Bills have won the last four, I think. I, what the fuck? They were supposed to fucking run away with the division. The whole question was supposed to be, can they get past the Chiefs? Ooh, that's going to be a good AFC championship. Nobody, nobody, nobody can fucking remember like fucking four months ago. Drives me crazy. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? You, Andrew, what's the under over? I hate the under over 43. Uh, and I was thinking it was going to be low scored. Sorry. Right, so the people are saying it's low scoring. They want you to jump on the hook and take the over. I might do it. <laughs> you want to take the over? You want to root for points? Tease it up if you want. I'll change the oh, odds I'd a bit. I say tease it down and go over. Or yeah, either way, either way. Hey, I'm a straight shooter. I don't fucking tease shit. All right. You know where you stand with me. No. You want to just uh, take I, the over? Uh, we never take the over. We always take the under. Well, if that fucking Eagles defense shows up and they just shut them down, then they got to score like fucking 35 of the points. How many um, touchdowns is 43? Uh, four oh, Jesus and a field Paul. goal? Not four. <laughs> four and a field goal. No, it's Five six. Seven no. times six is 42. Six. Shit. And a field goal. Paul, I, 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 I'll never figure you out, Paul. <laughs> I will <laughs> never figure you out. Every time I think you're smart, you say something dumb. Every time I think you're dumb, you say something smart. <laughs> Who are you, Paul? You are. I'm the, I'm the best handicapper in the <laughs> business, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you want to? Hey, you want to not do the under over? You weren't even close, Paul. Yeah, four is twenty-eight. 10 times 4 is 40. 4 is 28. I, I don't know. I, I got confused at <laughs> how many teams each team. I don't know. Let's do this. Paul, let's, let's just let's, let's let's slow it down. Let's not do the under over. Let's stop let's, doing addition and multiplication too. All right? Let's, let's stop do, that let's, too. Let's do the Buccaneers plus 3, getting 3, starting with points. Let's do Baker Mayfield to throw one and let's do Jalen Hurts to throw one. I think that's a doable, fun thing. Mm -hmm. Uh some reason I just pictured him running one in. You got—he's gonna have to throw one. They're both gonna have. But to he's throw hurt. One. He's not gonna run, right? All right, so let's let's do that. Okay. Hey, Paul, you have yourself a super weekend. So we're gonna have Buccaneers getting three, Jalen Hurts to throw one, Baker to throw one, and there you go. We put some money in your pocket. What else you want? All right, Paul, I got one. For, now we have to talk about something. I mean, Mount Rushmore of today's coaches basically just Nick Saban retires. Arguably yeah. the greatest college football coach ever. Seven rings. Who the fuck else has seven? Yeah, Nick Saban and Bill Belichick both leaving Bill their Bill Belichick, it's, it's, it's officially done. But that was a little more mutual. Was that was a little mutual, right? Belichick wanted out too, right? Like he was a little done. Yeah, I I think so. It it never ends well. No, but he would have if listen, he if he was fired, they would have done that Monday. I think they talked and I think I heard No, no, they, they they there was no there was no way we were going to fire him, I think. No. It was an unbelievable run and it is over. But I'm it's hearing some problem. rumblings. I'm hearing some rumblings that are going to make Jake the Snake happy. I'm hearing that Belichick wants uh, Justin Herbert and that Chargers team wants to come to the warm weather. Oh, my God. I can't even tell you how much I would enjoy that. It would be great, too, is if he went in there and he got them their first uh, far out bowl, Super Bowl, sorry, uh, championship. Dude, if Bill Belichick goes and... to fucking SoFi and wins a Super Bowl in Los Angeles, that would be... The, uh, he said, I'd love if we hired Vrabel. Oh, Vrabel's on the market. V oh, they, that's right. The Titans fired Vrabel. Yeah. And what about I think Vrabel he... to the Pats? Vrabel could go to the Pats. Yeah, I know. Um, come oh, on, this like is this, it's it. No, and it's not that I don't like Mike Vrabel. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I love Mike Vrabel. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, give me a second to fucking handle this shit. <laughs> And Sneaky Pete, what about Pete Carroll? Bring Pete Carroll back. Ooh, oh, Bill here's, the thing. here's the thing. Nobody's doing that. 
I don't think right now, with where we're at in a lot of positions, and uh, I don't know what kind of well, we got the number one draft pick that that could be tantalizing, but um, you're also following Bill Belichick. It would be so talk about fucking uh, how do you say apropos? Is that how you say it? He had to follow Bill Parcells when he was with the Patriots, Pete Carroll. And he and he was just the whole time he was there, he was not Bill Belichick. He wasn't Pete Carroll. He's like, you're not, I mean, you're not Bill Parcells. Then he would come back, even with the Super Bowl ring, he would be um not Bill Belichick. Yeah. Does he want to do? I don't think so. I mean, I if I was him, man, I'd want to go back to Southern California. Jake the Snake, how would you like Pete Carroll coming down to San Diego? Yeah, you want that competition in the bar? Him coming around? <laughs> He's got some stubble. I have to get some gum. Get some <laughs> gum, yeah. You got to get that jawline going. He goes down there, you know, meets a couple of chicks with some daddy issues. Next thing you know, your your little well starts drying up. He drinks your milkshake. <laughs> um, you know, Pete Carroll, one of the best. He's just a little bit older, so I kind of want someone younger to kind of like uh, pair with Herbert, but Belichick would be incredible. I mean, that that's obviously, I would definitely love to have him. So. I, well, listen, I, I like the Chargers way back during the Dan Fouts, Air Coriel day. So that would be great. Um, their fans are douchebags. You know, what's funny. How do you, how do you interview Bell? Oh, yeah, at least when they were down in San Diego, I remember I went down there, wore a Patriots hat. I was rooting for the Chargers. They weren't even playing um, right. the Patriots and they were just fucking cunts. Like, but the Bills fans were like that. I think it's just because we were beating everybody back then. But I'll tell you that that ship has sailed. Um, uh, yeah, Belichick exactly. doesn't. The best thing is Belichick just chooses a team he wants. There's no interview. What's he going to do? Yeah. Drop a fucking handful of rings on the desk and say, Where the, what has your fucking franchise done? You're lucky to have me. You fucking nuts. <laughs> uh, yeah, we want none. <laughs> yeah, dude. And listen. Plus, it would like, be great. You know, Tom Brady went down south and he won one. And then if he goes down and he wins, that would be number nine, Paul. Number and, nine. Wow. And dude, going to going to get having Justin Herbert and and Austin Eckler and having that talent with a guy like Belichick in that in that locker room. Oh, you don't want to yeah. play the Chargers. Oh, you think Paul he's on the Chargers before? If Belichick goes every week, <laughs> that's what this is what's funny. Everybody was saying that he's finished and he's this and he's that. Now that he's on the market, everybody's fine. Oh, oh we, should, we should get that guy. Stupid. Yeah, it's the same with Herbert. They're all trashing him until until uh, their team needs a quarterback. They're like, and then as you see on social media, they're like, trade for Herbert. How are uh, they trashing the guy? The guy got hurt. Uh, it's unbelievable. You'd be surprised. Oh, that's right. <laughs> People are fucking idiots. Yeah. I forgot. Sometimes I forget that. I mean, you'd think I'd learn from the example of myself. <laughs> I, got one, I got one for you, Bill. Sneaky Pete to the Pats. Mike Vrabel, your defensive coordinator. How happy would you be? Um, with a first round, I, I, I don't listen. That would be great, but I, I, I don't think Pete wants to start over. The thing about it is, is you're starting over with the Patriots, where the Chargers, you know, you're just trying to get the car back on the road. But they got, they have the personnel. Um, I'm trying to think. I know that guy from Atlanta got fired. Oh, yeah, I loved when he yelled at that other coach. Everybody's like, "What a dick!" It's like. Listen, he's emotional. He has to sell his house. He knew he was getting fired. He thought maybe, you know, maybe they could sneak one more victory in there and he wouldn't have to pull his kids out of the local school system. Yeah. And then that guy just fucking stomped on him. Oh, he kept shit. going, you know? I just thought of something so funny. I just thought of Belichick and Sneaky Pete in the same waiting room to interview for the Chargers. And Pete, Sneaky Pete's like, hey, Bill. <laughs> Bill goes in first. Sneaky Pete's just pacing around. Pete's going, hey, Bill, you know, I still wake up with more than wood. What about you? No Viagra. I'll fuck them all. Oh, shit. Oh, Want to race man. up the stairs? Oh, you know, I uh, I wake up sometimes with some wood. <laughs> and, uh, it's an end of an era, dude. Listen, I mean, what other team has had a better quarter of a century run than the Patriots? It's the, uh, nobody. Yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. It and was, and it's it's over and uh you know it's weird it's like i'm sad that it's over but there's also like the, the level paul the, the the years that i aged as much as we went to the super bowl all of those fucking times and all of that stuff but there, there's a zillion times we went to the playoffs 
during those 20 years and just, you know, living and dying on every fucking play and most of the times losing, you know, even with all the success, we won the title six times. And people talk about, oh, you lost to the Giants and the Eagles. It's like we fucking lost to the Ravens a couple of times. Yeah, We Ravens lost that won. one to the Colts when they stole our offense, those fucking cunts. And uh, we lost some bad ones not even getting to the Super Bowl. People forget about all of those. Dude, that was that one game, the Ravens. The, their first That's offensive play ran it up the gut for like 90 yards. We got stomped in our own house. I mean, that one, that was that was a humiliating loss. There was, there was some... But, you, yeah. you know, and then you got to fucking shake that off, not watch ESPN for four days. It was every fucking year of that. Um, so now to just sort of suck, it's kind of like, you know, you're in between projects. Like, all right, I don't have to be anywhere today. <laughs> <laughs> the movie's in the can. <laughs> yeah, I can watch the game. It doesn't really matter. I can just yeah. fucking relax for a second. But, you know, the Celtics are great. The Bruins are doing great. And um, I know what the Red Sox are doing. People are sitting there going like, hey, you know, they keep getting like, hey, this guy won the Cy Young five years ago or whatever. But I still believe in the Red Sox, though. Listen, good franchises are always working on just getting better and being there. And that's the nice thing. All those Boston teams you just mentioned uh, are just solid franchises with good people in the upper in the higher office that try to make the team better. That's what it is. The yeah, Steelers. Cam Neely has been crushing it for the Bruins. The amount of people that we lost, Craigie and Patrice Bergeron, and after that that regular season and that, that unbelievable disappointment in the first round, um, yeah. we came right back with new personnel, and we we have we set the league on fire. Now we're going through a little, you know, back and forth here right now, but we're, we're still doing yeah. great. Brought Lucic back, you know, so people stop pushing us around. I love what's going on out there. Franchises like the Steelers, like there are just certain franchises that just are always – they're just always, you're going to have a couple bad years. You're going to have a couple bad years, but then you come back. Um, hope, oh God, hopefully the Knicks, the Knicks are hot right now. The hottest team in the NBA. That trade we made is helping, but I can't, I got to just, I got to keep it down. I got to just keep it. I got to. I'm going to look at you from now on when you talk about the Knicks. <laughs> Every you notice how I parlayed year. that into good franchises, and then I said the Knicks are doing good right now. Paul, um, you are De Niro and Casino trying to land Sharon Stone. Just fucking give her her jewels and let listen, her leave. She, she never loved you, Bob. I want my fucking money. Oh, she was the worst. What? A, one of the top performances ever for, by a female I've ever seen ever. I mean, she should have got a fucking Oscar for that one. That was, dude, Ginger. Are you I think everyone was just they were so fucking upset for her, you know. Showing the goods there with uh, the, the movie before that. Oh, Basic Instinct. Basic Instinct. <laughs> it was a funny part of Michael Douglas's career. He's doing those fucking uh, sex thrillers. Just grabbing women and bending them over. <laughs> Tearing their fucking clothes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> and he was the hero. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, all right, well. There we go. There we have it. There we, there we have it. Is that it? We're going to end on Michael Douglas bending over the what's-her-face <laughs> on the couch? We got... Uh, it was the 90s. She was wearing thigh highs. She was obviously... Well, what were you wearing thigh highs for? I don't uh, know, because oh. I wanted to look nice. <laughs> <laughs> he was old, too. He was still old. Like, he just got through that. Like, if Michael Douglas was five years after that, it wouldn't have been all right. Yeah. You know, you, there was like a three year period. If you did a movie with Michael Douglas, you were getting bent over a couch. He's fucking streets of San Francisco scripts. music. What? <laughs> he's all psyched getting those scripts. Well, let's see what we got here. They <laughs> saved that scene. Save that scene. I want to. Yeah, but then he then that. he did the movie after that where like Diane Lane. Right? Remember that other movie where Diane Lane's cheating on him, and then he like stalks her and the guy and like kills him. And she's oh, like banging, like, like, get, like that, like, great yeah, looking yeah. Spanish. Hey, dude listen, or there's a reason why that guy's been working for like 50 straight years. I love He's Michael. Like, right, I'll switch I'm, it up. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Um, get out of here, you bro. fucking whore. The Anything Better podcast has, well, me and Bill, me and Bill both have the Browns, me and Bill both have the Chiefs. Bill has the Bills. I have the Steelers. Bill has the Packers, I have the Cowboys. Bill has problems. Me and Bill both have the Lions. 
And me and Bill both have the Buccaneers. Buccaneers. And the uh, Monday night special, Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield, Dan Campbell, uh, Justin Love, Josh Allen. Uh, what's his face there? Tippy Toes there on the Chiefs. <laughs> Tippy Toes is perfect. Tippy Toes is. Did you see Patrick that Mahomes? Kid? You see that kid imitate him? That kid imitate him? Oh, like, I, I mean, I've been saying that since the beginning. Dude, he does float around. It's he hilarious. Floats. He's light on. He's light, light in his fucking cleats there. Um, and then I got uh, <laughs> Joe Burrow. No, 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 Joe Flacco. Joe Burrow. Joe Flacco. What a sin. Joe Burrow should be in this. Fucking sin. All right. We got the Buccaneers getting three. We got Baker throwing one and Jalen throwing one for the Monday night special for a super wild card weekend. That's how oh, it it's going to be. Card. It's going to be wacky, wild, funorama, wild card weekend. Um, next week. Dude, what would you do if they just went old school this weekend? Because it's super duper wild, wacky, and they just had the cheerleaders come out with like no bras, wet t shirts, <laughs> and just fucking just went, just call it old school weekend. <laughs> old school. <laughs> uh, no bras, no annoying bras. <laughs> they just went. It, what, what if every week, just, just to fucking balance it out, how far they went the other way? I mean, they were wearing pink for a whole fucking month for seasons, right? Almost a goddamn decade. Just to fucking balance it out. Maybe they went too far in that direction. What if they just had every wild card weekend was just chauvinist wild card weekend? And they just went back. <laughs> I want to kiss you. Sneaking Pete's <laughs> chewing extra fast. <laughs> He's fucking psyched. <laughs> He's got a woman on either arm. <laughs> <laughs> he goes up to the cheerleader. How you doing, sweetheart? <laughs> uh, I'm going to fuck both of them at halftime. You want to he join smacks in? a cheerleader in the ass. He winks at her. Uh, <laughs> like to make some halftime adjustments on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Bet responsibly. Bet Enjoy responsibly. super duper freaky deaky. And don't forget, guys. John new- Turkey wild card weekend. <laughs> the, the new promotion. $5 to get you one fifty eight. You place your first bet. Okay, you will receive five dollars. Five dollars. You place your first bet at least five dollars. You'll receive one hundred and fifty. I like how you say dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars uh, minimum. Okay, you will receive one hundred and fifty-eight instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your wages. Just download the BetMGM app to your device. Use our bonus code Easy Burr B U R R. Sign up. You deposit at least five, and you get one hundred and fifty-eight in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. There you go. Bet. That's right. Hey, everybody, keep on trucking. <laughs> hey everybody <laughs> that's the super wild card weekend get ready get ready and andrew uh andrew did you because we gotta we gotta say this before we get out of here our producer andrew themless has uh an incredible record he shattered he's shooting he shattered one flew over the cuckoo's nest just one year just one year just, yeah. one, year. Uh, just one year don't you know don't get crazy you know i, I did it three times Am I am I protective of my of my record? Yes, I am. But Andrew, did you want to throw in any of your like locks? What's the Andrew Themis lock of the week? Uh, the only one that I might put money on is I actually do like the Cowboys, and I and I, I that's it shouldn't be, but I just there's too many weapons. It's I just don't think the Packers are gonna do well at home. I think it's at least two scores, but that's the only one. All right, I took that personally. And and the Lions, I'd take the Lions too. I don't see the Rams uh, doing much there. I actually think the Dolphins could win, but the only reason I'm not going to take the Dolphins is the weather. I, I think otherwise, it's a you know could be a fluke game. That's it. Nothing exciting, Paul. All right. <laughs> Nothing all right. exciting. All right. Well, there you go. You heard it. There. I remember early in the year, all they were talking about the Dolphins. Oh, well, look at this play. I mean, who runs a play like that? And then I just feel like everybody figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, well, Why is there an, echo? there an echo? Am I the only one hearing an echo? I hear an echo. Oh, I like that. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. All right, let's wrap this up so people have lives. Let's get out of here. Yep. All right, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you, we'll see you next week. Enjoy football. Bet responsibly. Salad. Salad. <laughs>